Hello and welcome everybody to the second round of the Pokemon Let's Go Tournament 2023. Uh, very excited to bring you this round here today. Uh, I'm Trevaria. I'm going to be the commentator for this race and I will be joined by uh, Leggy Starscream a little bit later on. Uh, this is a very exciting race that uh, we're about to watch, I'm pretty sure. Also, I think that Leggy just came in, but we're going to give her a minute to settle in. Uh, <laughs> Hi. Just on time. <laughs> Perfect. I didn't even have to monologue. <laughs> well, that's great. It was just about to go over the the runners here in, in the matchup. We have uh, Thomas Patrick WX, of course, uh, who just got a three zero personal best. Very very exciting. Uh, he's our pod runner here. A pod run runner here today. Excuse me. Uh, and from part two in round one, we have Ergote, who also just got a PB301. So just like about 30 seconds behind T-Pad. Uh, got a 308 in round one, also very respectable time. So this um, matchup at the front of this race is going to be very spicy, uh, I feel. Um, yeah, and then last but not least, we have Kid Rocker, who uh, got a 313 in round one, uh, coming in from, from the wildcard runners in part three. Uh, to round out our contestants here today. Yeah, but, you know, even with uh, those front two runners definitely uh, having the higher personal bests, we also have to consider the tournament times. Uh, Ergote dropped a 308 uh, in his first match, so if Kid Rocker uh, manages to push and get a little bit of a PB, uh, ergo might be a little close, sir, than we uh, might initially expect. Oh yeah, just because uh, just because Kid Rocker's PB is lower than uh, those of Teapot and Ergote, we shouldn't count them out. Uh, races <laughs> are very volatile, and uh, we could see basically anyone win today. So it looks like runners are now loading into the game. And yeah, it looks like it's an it's an all EV race. I've already seen some Picas Lander in the chat and I won't stand for it. Here, here. <laughs> I am also a known Pika runner, so I think we're in good company today for the commentary. Uh, but with that said, Eevee does have some, you know, uh, main differences with the early game and how we're going to go through things. Eevee gets, you know, the much better suite of special moves, let's be honest, um, and does a lot more soloing the various fights than Peek is able to. But for yeah. now, we're for now we're just going through the opening cutscene, uh, mashing through Oak's monologue, naming ourselves one, which is the single character that the Switch keyboard defaults to. And just... Welcome to the world of Pokémon! <laughs> Etc. Ah, t going for Go 1. Good choice. The very first choice in the game. Better make <laughs> it count. <laughs> Here's our rival. Also one. I think he has a canon name. I have no idea what it is. His name is Trace. I thought that was the guy who takes pictures. Uh, who's that? You know, from the anime. Uh, maybe? Guess they reused the name, though I don't think there's much cooperation between the people who produced the anime and the, and the games. That's pointing out that that's Trace C. Hence why confusion. Uh, okay, I see. <laughs> But yeah, now that we've been isekai into the world of Pokémon, it is time for our runners to do the first actual difficult part of the run, which is uh, the settings menu. Looks like no one got hung up or uh, inputs were eaten or something. Mm -hmm. Since this game uh, has to be played with the Joy-Cons, all of the menus have to be done with the stick. There's no uh, D-pad menuing, which 
it's a little clunky. Uh, so it, it happens from time to time that uh, you know you you aren't quite hitting that direction that you want the cursor to move in, and the game just eats the input. Fortunately, we didn't see that. But now it's time for the runners to catch their starter Pokemon. Yep. Doubles as uh, a catching tutorial, of course. Yeah, this game uh, as trying to cross over with the po wild success at the time that Pokemon Go was. It uses a motion control uh, catching mechanic that is, as far as I know, completely unique to this game. The closest thing we get is Legend Arceus, but that's even more uh, bog standard action game. Yeah. This is definitely very, very unique. Uh, sadly, it doesn't work 100% of the time. Uh, you can practice the movement and, and get like a pretty, uh, pretty good results. But sometimes, I don't know, the motion controls just do what they want and the balls go flying off into a direction that you didn't even point it at. Uh, so let's hope we don't see that today. I want yeah, to see some and, nice and clean catches. Yeah, as we saw with uh, Cape Hat's first throw, uh, just sailed over the Eevee's head. That happens sometimes even for, you know, top runners like him. Um, but... One of the important things to pay attention to when you're catching is the circle in the middle that's constantly uh, shrinking and then going back to the maximum size. The smaller that circle is, if you throw the Pokeball into it, you will get either a nice, a great, or an excellent. Um, and each of those is a multiplier of the amount of experience points you get for catching the Pokemon. Yes, it also makes it uh, more likely that the Pokemon will stay in the ball if you hit uh, if you hit it when the inner circle is smaller. So an excellent throw is more likely to catch the Pokemon than a nice throw. Mm -hmm. And especially in the early game, that means that the runners uh, are going to be looking for those excellence for the experience and also to avoid breakouts. Uh, there are different parts of the of the run uh, where experience plays less of a role, uh, but for the beginning part, definitely we want to see uh, the full experience gained on every catch. Now uh, the runners check their natures right there. I didn't catch all of them. I saw a uh, T-Pad has a Lex Eevee, which would be plus defense, minus special defense, perfectly runnable Eevee. Uh, nothing too special though. Mm -hmm. Did you happen to catch any of the other natures? I did not. Uh, let's see if chat did. Um, but the good news is, at this point, we've oh, only done... Yeah. Okay, only T-Pat looked. Yeah, the good news is, at this point, we've done enough routing, enough strats, enough work, that basically any nature is runnable. Obviously, some are faster than others, but there's no nature that will really hardlock you at this point in the tournament. Yes, uh, many runners have been specifically trying to route bad natures just so that you can get the run to finish. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, minus attack, for instance, which would usually be considered not runnable. Uh, you can pull off if you know the strats. Usually costs you a couple of turns along the way, so it's not ideal, but uh, the question is, is it worth it to keep running or would it be better to reload or to load the backup safe that you are allowed to prepare? Yeah, that backup safe has to be a neutral nature. That's the only main uh, restriction on it uh, in terms of the actual gameplay. But now we're getting to our first battle, if you're familiar with mainline Pokemon games, this is yet another mainline Pokemon game battle. Uh, the only thing that's really of note here... Well, there's two things. The first one is that Pikachu's Thundershock has a chance to paralyze, uh, which can be annoying. And also Pika, if it spams Growl, can really stall out this match. Yes, yeah, so it's always going to go for Thundershock turn one, but... 
Ideally, you just don't want to see it growl turn two. Because uh, if it doesn't, you usually can get the three shot uh, pretty comfortably. But if it growls turn two, it can also growl turn three, and then it's going to be a four shot. So um, one extra turn, it's going to waste you a little bit of time. Yeah, all of our runners getting through handily. If you lose this fight, it's rough because you don't get the experience points for it, but the game will still continue. Yes, this is the one fight that you actually can lose in the run. You just that on a little bit of money, a little bit of experience. Um, you should usually be able to make that up, though, uh, in terms of mm -hmm. experience. Um, might need to drop a status heal in the first shop to account for the missing money. But it's not the end of the world, and a Pikachu can actually be better than winning uh, the fight, because Pikachu always takes one turn longer on this rival fight compared to Eevee. Yep. Uh, T-Pat, unfortunately running into a Pidgey, you do not want to catch things on Route 1 uh, for reasons that we'll go into as the run goes on. Um, mostly they aren't worth a lot of experience. Um, and all of our runners coming up to this youngster and his Rattata. So let's finish kicking Ronnie's butt and see what our level up... Sorry, my bad. This is Eevee. This is Eevee, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately for Eevee runners, between the rival fight and Ronnie here, you are one experience point shy from seeing your level 6 stats. Yeah, it's... it's so annoying because uh, in Pikachu you always level up on the running fight because for some reason the EV, the rival EV, just gives you one more point of experience compared to the rival Pikachu. Uh, so yeah, the runners will not see the level 6 stats until uh, they reach the forest which Ergotate has just entered. Uh, it's going to fight the bug catcher here to the right, that is a required trainer fight uh, and of course he would definitely gain that one experience point from the Caterpie. <laughs> yeah, there is also the option to catch a bug out here outside the forest, uh, like T-Pat's about to do. Um, there is a bonus to your uh, catch rates outside the for until you enter the forest specifically. Yes. Um, so catching this Caterpie means that you have the second Pokemon in your pocket already. You don't have to worry about uh, any breakouts going on in the forest. And since, you know, T-Pat already checked his nature, he's got a better idea of where his stats are than our other two runners. Okay, uh, Ergotay had neutral attack and special attack, that's all I saw. Uh, and either... Kid Rocker got an attack AV, I didn't quite catch that, or uh, his EV is actually plus attack, so you'll have to see that. Yeah, That's our 16 saying... attack. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, chat's saying that Ergote is in fact all neutral, like you mentioned. Um, Kid Rocker is minus special defense. They're fighting the Pidgey trainer with uh, Pikachu usually uh, has a pretty easy time with this because you can just one shot it with Thundershock, but uh, Eevee can't. So there's a risk of getting your accuracy dropped by uh, by Sand Attack, which did happen to Ergotay, I think, but uh, luckily didn't miss after that. Yeah, both Kid Rocker and Ergotay got saw the Sand Attack but managed to still connect through it um, as Irigote is our first runner to pick up the lure. Do you want to explain how lures work? Sure, so uh, the lure has a couple of functions in this game. The first one is, uh, I believe, the more obvious one. That's just going to be more Pokemon spawning and increased spawn rate. Uh, the other thing that lures do is that the Pokemon, it forces the Pokemon on the route or in the area to spawn at the maximum level plus one that they can spawn in, in that area. So for instance, uh, things in forests can naturally spawn anywhere up to level six, but if you lure, they will always spawn at level seven, which a higher level is good for our runners for two reasons. One, a higher level catch gives more experience from the catch, which we definitely want to see. And then two, 
If the Pokémon you're catching is higher leveled, then it will take fewer levels to reach its evolutions. Which, you know, saves time because every level up is a text box that you have to mash through. Yep. And it looks like all of our runners are seeing and at least going for uh, the bonus catch Pikachu in the area. Pikachu is a on the rarer side of spawns, but uh, he is just a nice extra Pokemon to pick up since all of our runners are trying to have 50 Pokemon entries in their Pokedex. Yeah, so here in the forest, uh, you usually see the runners go for both of the early game bug types uh, with Caterpie and Weedle. Um, in EP version, you'll also have the opportunity to catch the Pikachu. It's not worth it to go for that Pikachu if you're already playing Pikachu version, but of course that's not relevant for today. Uh, <laughs> and the other thing that you always want to catch, either here in Forest or uh, on Route 2, uh, right after Forest, is the Bass Route, because you need a Grass or Water type to enter Brock's Gym. Of course, there are no Water types this early in the game, and since uh, players can't trade during the speedrun, uh, it's always going to be the Bass Route. Yeah. Um, our runner is getting some really good experience. Uh, Team Pat's Eevee already hit a level 10, where Eevee learns Double Kick, which is going to be the way that we uh, make our way through Brock's gym. But with a lot of that experience, going on to some of the bugs as well, uh, we're seeing a lot of level ups and a lot of evolutions as well. Yes, the good thing about the early game bugs is, of course, that they evolve within a small uh, amount of levels. So if you catch them at level 7, they will be fully evolved by level 10. So just three level ups. That's really, uh, really nice and convenient because that's six Pokemon registered in the decks for just six level ups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unfortunately, in this game, every single time the Pokemon levels up, it costs a second or two. So you really want to minimize the number of levels that you're putting on to your Pokemon as a whole. Uh, T-Pat and Ergote catching dueling bell sprouts as Kid Rocker is taking on the Bugcatcher Sammy, the last trainer here in the forest, uh, with a Metapod that is not a threat whatsoever. Um, the only real question left on the table before our runners get onto Brock is whether or not any of our runners are going to see uh, something worth catching in the small patch of grass between here and Pewter City. I mean, that's also one exceedingly rare spawn that they could uh, get in forest. But I haven't, seen, <laughs> I haven't seen anything like that yet. And Kid Rocker is now out of forest, is gonna venture onto Route 2. Still level 9 on the EV, so really needs uh, one more catch. Mm -hmm. Just gonna look at the tracker here for Kid Rocker. Hasn't got a Weedle yet, so. Uh, ah. Yeah, there we go. Glowing Weedle. Perfect. Yeah, the nice thing about these spawns out here, outside of the forest, um, are that they're actually level 9. Um, so that's that glowing Weedle, uh, glowing Pokémon, are either really big or really small, depending on which color they're glowing. Uh, those actually give a bonus a uh, bit of experience with a chance of giving an extra super bonus uh, if they're supersized. Yeah, so usually, let's just check the nature here, yeah. Okay, interesting. So, uh, Cat Rocker plus defense minus special defense. Isn't that the exact same nature that, uh, yeah, it also lags, just like T-Pad. Interesting. Well, I hope these runners aren't lax at making it through this game. Oh, 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 oh. I killed myself. <laughs> um... So now we have Ergote going into Brock's gym, uh, presenting the grass or 
water, but in this case, grass Pokemon we were talking about. Every gym in this game has a little challenge condition for entry like that. Um, but now we're just getting into the fight. Uh, hopefully nothing too exciting happens here. Usually shouldn't, uh, since none of the runners are minus attack. You're just going to see basically the same fight for all of them, uh, going for two double kicks on Geodude and then uh, opening up on the Onyx with a Tail Whip followed by two more double kicks. So it's a five turn fight. Uh, a little slower than what Pika gets, mostly because Pika can use uh, Oddish. Yeah, Oddish, if you're lucky, makes it a two turn fight. More often than not, if you're me, it's a three turn fight or four if he Onyx's headbutt flinches you. But since Eevee outspeeds here, and uh, unlike the Oddish, there's no chance of a headbutt flinch for yep. Eevee version. And Ergo Tay is first through the first one of our runners to get a badge, as <laughs> far as we can tell. As far as we can tell, yes. We are looking into uh, T-Pad's feet right now, so we hope it will be back any minute. Mm -hmm. Um, Brock, interestingly enough, uh, gives us the Headbutt TM, uh, which is really good. It's 70 base power, has a chance to flinch, and it's stabbed for Eevee. What more do you want? Yeah, it's really such an excellent move. All of the moves in, that the gym leaders give uh, as TMs in this game are just really great, and we use like three of them uh, for... Mm -hmm for this run, so uh, it's very nice. You, you get them anyway. Uh, might as well have them be useful. Yeah. Which hasn't always been the case in the franchise. Sometimes you get some <laughs> strange moves from gym leaders. Yo, yeah, shout outs to Brock's original TM Bide. Yeah, what a move. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Arcate now doing the first shop of the game. Uh, just buying a couple of X items uh, to buff up during battles. Also, of course, great balls for some more catches and status heals. Yeah, one of the you... nice thing... yeah. yeah, I was going to yeah. say, one of the nice things about the X items in this game is that they, despite having their older prices, they give plus two stages to the stat. So the first one basically uh, doubles your stat. In... Yeah. It's really, I don't know why they went with this. I mean, I'm not complaining, but uh, I, I believe it was Gen 7, so um, with Sun and Moon, that the X items were buffed from raising your combat stage by plus one to raising the stage by plus two. But they also, in Sun and Moon, raised the prices to accommodate for that. But in the remix, like in uh, Let's Go, the buff to the power was still there, but they didn't change the prices, so it's incredibly cost-efficient to buy a bunch of these X items and use them any chance you get, basically. Yeah. Like, X items have always been incredible in Pokemon speedrunning, but in this game in particular, they, they are the best value you can find. Um, speaking of great value, you want a fish? <laughs> yeah, uh... This person in the Pokemon Center just sells you a magic card. That's the fastest Pokedex uh, entry that you can get in the entire run. You just go in there, pay 500 Pokemon dollars, uh, and get out. It's very, uh, very nice. <laughs> you have to plan for it while you're doing your shopping, so if you buy a little too much, you won't be able to afford the magic card. Yeah, but, but the good news. Yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah, the, the good news is that the way that the routes are structured, uh, that sort of shopping is very much uh, routed around. Um, ev like, all of the backup strats, all of the backup shopping, and the main strats are like, okay, no, you need to make sure you have that 500 in your pocket. Yeah, this early in the run, uh, there isn't too much variability. 
So the first shop is always gonna look exactly the same, usually. So you, so you know what you have to buy and you will always have those 500 Pokemon dollars left over to buy the Magikarp. I uh, could Rock Rocker got an Ekans here, which is a very nice optional catch. Uh, it's pretty rare to spawn him. I don't know the exact number from the top of my head, but um, it's nice if you get it because it's a catch. It's a little bit of extra experience and you really do want to get those bugs evolved. Uh, as soon as possible. So getting that Ekans experience is really nice. Yeah, the other main thing we're looking for right now is the requirement to get into Missy's gym is to have a level 15 Pokemon. And in particular, uh, because right now Eevee is our main Pokemon that we're going to be using to carry us through the game, our goal is to make that Pokemon our Eevee. Yes, and we will get there by catching catching a bunch of stuff in the basement of Mount Moon. Uh, the runners are specifically looking for three Pokemon here. Uh, Clefairy, which is the Pokemon with the highest experience yields uh, out of all the at least stage one catches that you can get here. Uh, then Paris, also very nice to get. And Geodude, Ergoday is going to go for this glowing Geodude right now. Uh, which is just a very convenient catch. It doesn't give a ton of experience, but um, you basically need anything to get to level 15 in time for Misty. Yeah, and with the excellent two-player catch on the glowing Geodude, you know, those bonuses do add up. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, if this oh. is super sized, then it's definitely great. Mm-hmm. The pet is going to catch the juju just before going down to the basement. Uh, we pick up two items down there. One a nugget, that's just a, a Pokeball uh, on the map, and one hidden item, the Moonstone. And um, hidden items in this game have a 50% chance of respawning every day. So the runners usually set their clock in a way where uh, the the, their date will just roll over on the switch uh, just after they picked up the moonstone for the first time so that they get that 50% chance to maybe get a second moonstone. Because, you know, it's an evolution stone. It gives you the option to evolve something with it later that you usually wouldn't get. Yeah, it, the optimal one, the optimal... Uh, Moonstone Pokemon to evolve in Eevee is evolving a Jigglypuff to Wigglytuff because Wigglytuff doesn't learn any moves on evolve on evolution. But if you get the second one, and you've already got the second uh, Pokemon that evolves from it, like that, that's just a free catch. Uh, Ergo Tay, checking for the Double Moonstone doesn't look like. He got it. Yeah, definitely dealing with the bat convention down there. Uh, this is the second time he's left and re-entered the There we go, set. finally. <laughs> Yo! Two glowing Pokemon, always really good at this stage of the game because how important getting that experience fights is there isn't actually a lot of wiggle room in your experience routing at this time. You really need uh, enough catches, and you really need them to be good. Absolutely, this is what I was, uh, this is the part of the run that I was talking about earlier, where runners will always try to go for the excellent to get most out of the catches uh, in terms of experience. Uh, now with two glowing catches, it is very likely that Ergotay will hit level 15 in time. Uh, sadly, Neither of the glowing catches was the Clefairy, which again, that would have been best. But you still take those. And apparently yeah. ends up getting the Double Moonstone here. Maybe checked a little bit too early when the date hadn't rolled over yet. Nice, excellent throw. That was smooth as butter. I have to see that T-Pad basically getting the same thing on Paris uh, in tandem with Ergotay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there is most of the way to level 15 on Eevee. That's basically perfect uh, yeah. experience routing. The remaining fights in the rest of the this dungeon will get Eevee all the way up to 15. 
The only sad thing about not hitting level 15 off of the catches here is that uh, the upcoming trainer fight against the Sancho trainer uh, is a very, very bad range at level 14 for headbutts mm. to get the one shot. So you kind of do want to be level 15 by the time you leave, but of course you can't always guarantee that. And this time uh, the experience just didn't work out like that. So um, we may see some we may see some sand attack shenanigans. We may see a poison sting poison here. I don't want to jinx anything. <laughs> Let's just say Sanshu, a very annoying Pokemon to fight in this, uh, in this run. Yeah. And that goes doubly if you're playing Eevee. <laughs> I mean, Pika. Okay, I'm not sure if that was a choice, but Ergote is going into this fight with two controllers. Okay. Um, so, with what you mentioned about it being a range here, I don't hate it if you really just want to prevent the chance of things going wrong, especially if you if he knew that Bellsprout was going out speed there. I think that's actually a really heads-up play. Yeah, if you don't want to take the risk, and I can definitely understand that. Um, it's a good safety play, just generally f doing fights that you would usually do with one controller. With that second controller by your side is always a good way to make those fights a lot safer. We're going to see a bunch of those safety strats that you wouldn't usually go for in a PP attempt uh, in later parts of the run. But that was just the first example. Yeah, and right now, uh, speaking of safety strats and backups and whatnot, it is worth noting that T-Pat doesn't have a Clefairy. Really? That is it unfortunate is... for the catch count, but his experience seemed fine. Oh yeah, just didn't get yeah. one. Uh, this uh, is the... Yeah, okay, that makes up for it a little bit. Um, could still get one down here, even though his lore has expired. This is the floor where Clefairy is most likely to spawn. But it probably won't be, I mean, it definitely won't be at the highest level <laughs> because the lore expired. Which, you know, on the one hand, it's unfortunate. On the other hand, some days you just have to make do with the best of what. Babe! What is this Paris convention for Ergo Day? Just stepping into craps every second. Uh, God, speaking of L Legends Arceus earlier, I'm sorry for cursing you, friend. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, T-Pet now on the Super Nerd fight. This is a, a little bit of an annoying, annoying fight, especially if you haven't hit level 15 yet. Because at level 15, both of these Pokemon that we're fighting on this fight are guaranteed to uh, be one shot or at least taken out in one turn. And this Voltorb just set up Light Screen, which doesn't matter. That's one of the better things it can do in the one turn that it gets if you don't one shot it. It can also confuse you, which is very annoying. Oh no, never mind. That's the Magnemite. The Magnemite can confuse you. The Voltorb can paralyze you. So, uh, being level 14 on this fight. Not idea. But T-Bet is making it work. Yeah, it looks like uh, Kid Rocker uh, found a Paris, uh, unfortunately missed the circle on the throw. Um, not sure if his lure ran out yet or not. Um, but his experience is also a little on the rough side. Uh, the good news is that if you don't get all the experience, uh, shouts to T-Pet finding the fairy. Uh, there are backup strats. There's a couple of there, there's a patch of grass outside of Cerulean where if you're feeling desperate on experience, you can catch a Rattata or a Spiro, or if you haven't yet, an Ekans. Um, additionally, you can just choose to do the rival fight first as opposed to fighting Misty, which will get you your experience that you need. Though it is a little bit slower on the whole. Yeah, ideally you just really want to get to level 15 in time. Mm -hmm. uh, Tibet's Clefairy was also level 9. Sadly, he missed the first throw. And uh, getting things in the first throw gives you another experience multiplier. So um, missing that throw means that Tibet lost out on a little bit there. but. It it still brought him to level 15, which also makes this Jesse and James fight a lot more bearable. 
<laughs> clerical correctly. It's been a minute since I've played the Eevee run. <laughs> The Shetty is just uh, using an X attack in Belchbot's turn to buff up Eevee in the same turn and then spam uh, Headbutt to get rid of both the Coughing and the Ekans. Uh, if your Eevee has good enough attack, you can one-shot the Coughing, which I would usually prefer going for because the Coughing has a move that can poison you while the Ekans doesn't. But sometimes you just don't have a choice and you just want to get one of the Pokémon off of the field as fast as possible, so uh, some of the runners focusing the Ekans so on. Yeah, I've seen a couple of different strategies uh, for taking on that uh, Jesse and James fight. Uh, we have Ergote picking a backup PP up, that's an extra 5,000 in the pocket. Uh, TPAP also going for it. Uh, so that'll be useful. Uh, Ergotea also stopping to pick up the three Great Balls right outside of town. As Kid Rocker has finished the Super Nerd fight. So, also gonna pick a Fossil and then... Gonna do the Justin James fight here. You know, Ergotea is entering the Pokémon Center in Cerulean. Uh, and it's going to spend like a minute here teaching some moves. Do so you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so uh, unique to talk about Let's Go you know, are a couple of moves for your starter Eevee and your starter Pikachu. Um, Eevee gets a bunch of different moves based off of the different types of the Eevee illusions. Uh, Pikachu gets a electric type attack as well as a surf style and a fly style move. Uh, based off of historical depictions of Pikachu. Uh, in this case, we pick up all three moves for Eevee and the only move offered here for Pikachu. Uh, for Eevee, it gives you incredible coverage with a fire, water, and electric type attack, um, all of which have a 100% chance to do a bonus effect, the fire and electric par paralyze and burn, irrespectively and the water move will uh, heal you 50% of the damage like Mega Drain or other uh, moves. The Pikachu move is irrelevant right now, but it's also amazing. Yeah, it's really interesting how uh, these special moves impact the run throughout for both versions, really. Uh, Kid Rocker just finished up on uh, Justin James and hit level 15 from the coughing experience. So literally the last possible thing that gives you experience. Uh, won't need to wait around for any extra catches, won't need to fight the rival first. So that's definitely nice to see. Yeah, we have Kid Rocker uh, just out of the mountain, picking up the PP up. Uh, so that's three for three for today's runners. Um, taking a moment to wait and see what spawns, sees a Rattata, decides it's not worth it, and is heading into town. As uh, T-Pat is about to start Misty, and Ergo Tay is currently setting up on her duck. Yeah, so since Buzzy Buzz is a special move, you want to set up one X special attack here. That's then gonna take care of the Psyduck in one hit but you won't usually be able to one-shot the Starmie. But since Buzzy Buzz always paralyzes, that guarantees that you're gonna outspeed the Starmie in turn two. Ergotay's Eevee got knocked pretty low there. Also, t is doing 2C Misty. Interesting. Yeah. Probably also a safety thing. Yeah, if, if nothing else, it saves you the uh, risk of being knocked too low by Psyduck. And if you aren't sure about the range on Starmie, I guess having the Bellsprout, as we see here, uh, turns that in, keeps that as a two round two controller fight. I'm pretty sure that is not a guaranteed knockout though uh, at the level and special attack that t was at, unless I missed a couple of special attack AVs. 
Usually you have to have a quite high special attack to have a guaranteed one turn on the Sami with a two controller fight. t got it though, so uh, probably was planning around that anyway. Yeah, and for, for all we know, I, I don't know what what ra combination of ranges on the Bellsprout make it possible. Yeah, I mean, I guess if, if, if T-Pad's Bellsprout is just incredibly jacked, you know, plus attack, 31 IV or something, then <laughs> that'll carry the fight. Uh, well, Argo and T-Pad now both on the rival. Yep. Uh, this rival fight is, you know, very straightforward um, and is going to just set the tone for rival fights going forward. Our rival's going to leave with a Pidgey and later on Evolutions, um, which we want to take out as soon as possible because if we all recall, Pidgey has Sand Attack, and if there's one thing I know Pokemon Runners love, it's dealing with accuracy checks. Yes, we love it. <laughs> Um, the Pikachu uh, still has a chance to paralyze, but at this point, with enough stats and experience, I'm not sure how off likely you are to outspeed, but uh, we it probably happens more often than not. Both Keypad and Ergotay now entering Nagat Bridge. This is our pretty straightforward part of the run, where Eevee's basically gonna spam Headbutt on every fight. You do have to kind of keep track of your Headbutt PP because you need a couple of those later. Oof. Uh, no. Pitchworker's Eevee died on. Yeah. Missing. That's That is unfortunate. Yeah, I got the. What must have been like a Scald crit in the burn? Um, and then tried to heal, uh, got knocked down immediately. Oh, yeah, and now we're like down to. <sighs> that is. Know. You go. Yeah, I don't quite know what happened there, but uh, really unfortunate. It's gonna have to take the loss here, which also means loss of money. Yes, 240 Pokemon dollars lost. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, just loss of time because you're going to get reset to the Pokemon Center. Luckily, we do enter the Pokemon Center in Cerulean, so it's not like uh, it sends you back to your own house in, in Palatown. Oh, but uh, yeah, imagine that. That would basically be run over at that point. Uh, just we'll have to redo the fight now. Yep. Uh, it does keep uh, the experience points from earlier. Uh, does keep the trainer progress in the gym, so it's just a matter of running back up to Misty and redoing the fight. It is unfortunate, but, you know, that RG comes for us all eventually. Yes, indeed. Let's hope uh, he has a, an easier time the second time around. <laughs> Um, in the meantime, we have T-Pad and Ergote making their way up through Nugget Bridge. Uh, all of these trainers have one Pokemon each until the very last one, who I guess technically isn't even on the bridge anymore. Um, but the only thing that's really noteworthy going down this bridge section is that the Meowth has Fake Out. Which, basically, if it hits, does chip damage and makes you waste a turn. That's yeah, pretty annoying to get that because uh, in later parts of the run, um, the runners will be able to work around the fake out by using that first turn to set up an X item. But you don't really need that for this Meowth because it's just one Meowth that's always going to go down to a headbutt or a sissy side. So you're just losing time if you get the fake out. And it can just randomly choose not to go for it. So, yeah. It's pure RNG. Yeah, just sitting about here going, yeah, you, you lose a turn of time today. Have fun. Sometimes that's just how it goes. Uh, Ketrocker has beaten Misty the second time around, can now also go to Nugget Bridge and fight the rival. 
Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, both of our other runners are at the end of the bridge already fighting the rocket grunt. It is interesting to note that we do see this fight happening with two different backgrounds. It depends on how far forward off the bridge you were uh, when you either talked to or the trader saw you. Huh. Interesting. I, I never paid attention to that. I usually don't talk to the rocket grunt. I walk right next to him so he doesn't move mm. when he sees me. So I guess I've always gotten the background that Ergote just got there. I, I think it was Ergote who didn't get the bridge background. Keep at going for an, another one of those optional catches. Oh no. Oh no. The first ball didn't come out. That's one of those motion control mishaps that can happen sometimes. Yeah, it gets a breakout here. That's a little frustrating. Yeah. Oh, and then the jump. Well. Well, at don't... least at this point, you don't, you, you know you aren't worried about the XP, so, you know, anything that catches at this point. Yeah, you, you take that. Uh, you're not lured on this route, so you're not usually um, like banking on any spawns. Mm -hmm. But if you do get a, a Venonet spawn right at the edge, uh, you might want to go for it. This Venonet actually seems to have been quite far away from the edge of the grass, like on the other side. So I'm not quite sure why T-Pad decided to go for it. I guess my thought is there's two main schools of thought on optional catches in the tournament setting. Mm -hmm. There are some people who are like, no, I want to keep going for the only the fastest catches, only the ones that are right there. Whereas you also have runners who are like, you know, if I see it, I'd rather have it in my pocket in case the RNG swings back the other way and I don't see, for instance, either Nitto spawn. Yeah. It's definitely good, uh insurance for later basically mm -hmm. you have that catch now you have that pokemon registered so uh if you don't see something else that you really wanted then it's not that bad i can definitely um, see that be a, a good strategy for a race setting like this where you don't just get to reset and do it over if you don't see the spawns that you need yeah and Especially with that Venonat, uh, T-Pat now has 52 planned, so outside of the bugs, most of the Pokémon we're catching are single evolutions, so you have a base form and then you evolve at once. Um, having 52 is nice because it means you can skip out on catching the base form of any of these and its evolution and just call it a day, so if Cubone doesn't spawn if Ghastly doesn't spawn. Yeah. Uh, having the plant count be at an even number uh, becomes increasingly important with uh, while the longer the run goes on. Because you don't want to end up catching more Pokemon than you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you just said, you know, if, if you can keep catching them in pairs, that makes it easier to manage. But as okay. Kid Rocker... Oh. Yes. As Kid Rocker is here, finishing up the bridge, we have T-Pad and Ergote making their way down through Route 5 to Route 6, where the next major catching section is going to happen. Yeah, Route 6 is an interesting catching section. It's not quite as significant uh, for EV version because you don't catch a partner Pokemon or something you just catch a couple of things try to get to a, a decent level on the EV um, so you do want to see something spawn but you're not as dependent on a specific spawn showing up so Ergot is going to look for uh, a Vulpix a Jigglypuff and potentially an Abra spawning Depending on your EXP, you can also choose to go for a Pidgey on Route 6 uh, that will evolve to Pidgeotto within one level, so very convenient as well. But you, that would also mean that um, you wouldn't have the chance to maybe get the Pidgeot later. 
and also, if you're really desperate for experience, you can catch a Rattata here. Um, you probably don't want to evolve it because it's three levels and an extra move. But Rattata is a common enough spawn later on and isn't that hard to catch. So, different runners have different opinions about uh, how and when best to catch the different parts of the rat Rattata line. Kidrock are getting both a Meowth and a Venonat spawn. That's both of the optional catches you can get up there. Uh, so definitely a good choice going for this. Also gets a motion control moment. Really unfortunate. I feel like I jinxed it earlier when I was talking about it. I didn't mean to. <laughs> I mean, it was going to happen before the end of the race, no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> Sargate so picked up a rare candy that is hidden on the route and is now catching a Vulpix. Uh, like I said, one of the Pokemon that you usually want to catch on Route 6. Meanwhile, Teapad making his way through the underground, picking up a nugget here and then uh, a lure a little bit down the hall. And Kid Rocker just barely missing the Venonat circle. I call shenanigans game, I call shenanigans. Yeah, just a quick shout out here. Uh, there is currently also a second race in the tournament going on at the same time over at uh, the second channel, Pokemon Speedruns TV 2. So uh, if your internet can handle it, consider watching them both. Because <laughs> that one is also so very exciting. So you're suggesting multi-race drifting? <laughs> I guess I am. Ooh, I see an Abra on Nagate screen. Ooh, that's always exciting. Abra is both a rare spawn and also uh, a bit of a pain to catch. If you approach it from anything resembling the front, it will just teleport out of the way and... Well, I guess you're not catching an Abra today. Yeah, that's always really really annoying to see the Abra spawn and then basically immediately uh, despawn because... You're facing it. Uh... And then on top of that, it does move around back and forth as we saw, but luckily the Nanab berry is how you pronounce that. I've never been sure. I would have always pronounced it Nanab, but I don't know. That's uh, fair. Argotate, yeah, Argotate just doing the uh, vermilion skip here where you can uh, walk right in the middle between those two trainers facing each other and not get seen by either of them. Uh, it's pretty precise. Luckily got it here uh, without any problems. We'll have to do it a second time going out of a million. But it's definitely a good start. Ergo Tape holding on to the Helix Fossil, uh, selling that uh, PP up he picked up earlier. Um, might just be holding on to it as a potential catch for later in case uh, the route gets a little bit wonky. Uh, does not have it highlighted on his tracker yet, so probably is just keeping it deeply in the back pocket. Yeah, that's been a pretty popular strat with uh, with runners, just keeping the fossil. It is pretty slow to actually revive it in Cinnabar, but you're in Cinnabar anyway, so if you're really struggling with the catch count, uh, it is a good thing if you still have it, so that is why uh, T-Pad and Ergotay picked up the PP up earlier that you would usually skip in a PP attempt. Uh, guess we'll see if Kid Rocker, Kid Rocker also decides to keep the fossil when he gets to Vermilion City. Yeah, because also you could just sell the fossil as well and just have infinite money and resources uh, for the next section of the game. And that could be a different kind of backup strategy, uh, depending on where you're, you, you feel your weaknesses are with the game, where you are worried about the game's RNG and motion controls being a little wonky for you. But anyway, 
I hear there's a lovely island concert. We're on a boat. That joke's not dated. You are. I, I did not understand that. <laughs> uh, I'm on a boat is a song made by the band the, the Lonely Island. Ah, right, yes. I am familiar, just not with that song, apparently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, Argote is now going to enter the next travel fight here. This is one of those fights where you usually always, always go for the two controller strat because uh, it makes it much easier, uh, much more consistent uh, to beat the rival here. Yeah. Once again, we're dealing with another member of the Pidgey line. Um, we really want uh, that Pidgeotto to go down before it gets even a chance to think about using Sand Attack. Yeah, not just Sand Attack. Uh... If you if your EV doesn't outspeed Pidgeotto, which can happen if you are running minus speed or if you're at a pretty low level, then and you have the Buzzsprout out on the field with you, Wing Attack just one shots the Buzzsprout, which is pretty annoying because you've kept that along for such a long time. It's probably already like level 18 at that point, uh, just three mm -hmm. levels up of evolving, and now you have to revive it because Pidgeotto knocked it out. That's that's just annoying. Yeah. Of course, Sand Attack has the potential to waste you even more time. So, in general, <laughs> best to just that speed. <laughs> Not yeah. have to worry about it. S simply remove the Pidgeotto from the space of possible problems. Yeah, sadly, that's going to be the lead Pokemon for the rival throughout the rest of the run. So, uh... There are still a couple of chances where we could see some sand attack shenanigans, depending on the stats and levels that the yeah. runner's lead Pokemon has at that point. Yep. Hopefully we don't have to, but there's always that chance. Uh, Kid Rocker making his way onto Route 6 has found a Vulpix. Uh, t Pat and Ergote are on their way to learn Cutty Cut, or what, whatever the a, a special HM move is, here is called. It is called Chop Down. Right, it's Cutty not... Cut. <laughs> 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 not quite as fun as uh, as the move names for it, for it and Pikachu. I mean, I also like to call strong push pushy push, so uh, I'm with you. Right. <laughs> um, but it, it works exactly the way that if you've ever played a Kanto game with it, it's HM01 cut. You just don't need to teach it to anything. Uh, you talk to the random bushes, like the one the game very helpfully points you to in front of Serge's gym. Oh god, Ergotate, what are you doing? You have to go beat the gym! No, we don't. We're no, we'll no Ali Serge here. Much later. <laughs> also, pu just putting off the, the minion skip on the way out as well. Uh, yeah, there are no batch requirements for using those field moves like they used to be in the original Kanto games. So even though you would also be able to use cats uh, in like fire red leaf green or red blue yellow, uh, we don't really have to worry about having badges. We can just go get some other field moves, use those without thinking about badges. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Uh... Yeah, so for those of you keeping score at home, our next uh, gym we're going to be fighting is Blame. Yes, and that's like in an hour from now, so... Right? Uh, <laughs> we have some other stuff to do. It's not all about the gyms. So yeah, um, Ergote went for uh, the Jigglypuff catch on Route 6 on the way back, so Teapot uh, pulled ahead again. Uh, had been ahead in terms of catches of for a little bit, is still ahead by one catch, so uh, since those catches take time, you always have to consider that when comparing the runner's time, the runner's pace at the moment. 
after yeah. we've reached that sorry after we've reached that 50 uh, catch count uh it's gonna be much easier to compare and to gauge who maybe is ahead yeah there's a lot of jockeying for position here um because like you mentioned you know catches take time evolutions take time and so our runners are going to be moving around a bit if they get good catches if they get bad catches if things spawn if they have to wait till later to catch things all these can really come into play but by the time we're doing the saffron city stuff taking out you know the taking over the self uh hq fighting sabrina by that point Almost all of our runners are going to have 50 catches unless something severely gone wrong for them. Which in a race setting can happen. We could see some desperation catches uh, later in the run. Of course, we don't want to see that. We want everyone to have a nice and smooth run, but sometimes you, you can't help it. Yeah, so it's important to, to just, you know, always keep in the back of your head like okay you know these are the things i've seen these are the things i can still see these are the things that i'm gonna need to start figuring out what i'm gonna do with now that they haven't showed up um both t-pad and ergote have stopped along this particular part of the route to evolve their jigglypuff into wigglytuff um once we get through uh, the two fights here, we'll be on to another catching section on Route 10. And we'll be catching a fair number of things there, so we'll definitely have room to cycle Pokémon in and out. And taking the time to evolve things here just makes sense. Yeah, especially you want to get rid of that Jigglypuff and you have the Moonstone, so this is really the best time to evolve it, then get rid of it. You know, you'll never have to think about it again. Uh, so this is usually where runners will evolve the Jigglypuff if they catch it on Route 6, of course. Uh, if you don't get one, you can still get it on Route 7 or 8. Uh, but at that point, you may have already used the Moonstone on something that you did catch, like one of the Nidorans that are up for grabs on the upcoming route. Yeah. And unfortunately, uh, Kid Rock are falling prey to uh, one of the outcomes that you mentioned earlier with uh, the rival's Pidgeotto taking out his Bellsprout. Yeah, Kid Rocker seems to be pretty low on experience here. It looks like, uh, yeah, just hit level 19 now. So uh, going into the fight at level 18, if you did get a couple of speed AVs or R plus speed nature, that Pidgeotto is just going to outspeed you. And that is exactly what happened here. Yeah, T-Pat making it past the spinners outside of Route 10. Well, that's a rat. That is a rat. Just going to stand up with the second controller, but first going to go for the Nidor and Mail. Uh, on this route, Route 10, you really want to get both of the Nidos and Spiro. You can also catch a Krabby uh, or a Radita and or a Radita on this route. Uh, but Krabby is a pretty slow evolution. And Rattata you can catch basically anywhere else as well, so it's not the end of the world if you don't see one. Uh, Teapot did not go for early rats, so it's probably not going to catch the Raticate that he just saw. Would really prefer getting the Rattata and being able to evolve that, you know, getting two catches out of it. Okay, and Ergote is seeing a small bird, a big bird, and two Nidoran females. Uh, the patch of grass here can support uh, four Pokemon being spawned at a time, so a lot of the time what we'll see from our runners is them sitting there and waiting for all four to spawn so that you don't have to worry about being on a catch chain, uh, which is a mechanic when you catch a Pokemon in this game, it is more likely to be spawn. It is more likely to spawn in afterwards. Yeah, so you definitely always want to wait for those four first spawns to come in. T-Pad did go for the Raticate, even though Radita spawned. So this means he really wants the experience. Sadly, got a little bit trolled by the attack from the Raticate, so did not get the first ball uh, experience multiplier. But at least he can still go for the Rattata now. 
to uh, get a little bit extra and have both of those catches. Or did I just... It's a little bit pixelated for me. I didn't see if there was actually a uh, There is. Was it's kind of up by the fence. All right, yeah. And if you catch it this way around, you won't run into the situation where a Redditor will want to evolve from the Radicate experience. So that was definitely the right way to do it in. Mm -hmm. If you do want to go for that sweet, sweet Radicate experience, because it gives quite a lot. Uh, with the first ball multiplayer, it's like over 1,000. 1,500 or something. That's good experience for this uh, for this part of the game. I didn't actually realize that the Raticate experience was that good. Wow. Yeah, it's really good. It's, it's better than Rhyhorn and Tunnel. Oh, wow. Okay, that is impressive. I, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure it's just up there with Graveler in terms of experience yield. That is mm -hmm. why many of the runners have started catching early Radata on Route 2 to help with early game experience. Uh, and then just catch the Radicate. I hope that they get a Radicate on Route 10, because that once again helps with the experience. It is a little bit slower than just catching a Radata and letting it evolve, because the catching process can be pretty slow. Uh, but yeah, it's just better for experience and, and makes the run more consistent if you do get it. Yeah, it looks like we have Ergote finding a Lunaran male. Um, no crab yet. But yeah, the I, dropper... I... But Kid Rocker is making his way down Route 9, so maybe we'll see one soon. Yes, we'll get another shot at some rare spawns. Uh, crab isn't the only rare spawn that can happen on Route 10. There is another one, but... Uh... I, I don't know if I would want to see that, because it is pretty much a trap. It's a meme. Look, uh, we, we all love seeing the Chansey. But, That's... let's face it, on this route it's a meme. It is pretty, it is, it is a meme, because it's very hard to catch here. Uh, Tipa's just getting a Spiro as he was uh, getting ready to leave the route. Meanwhile, Ergate, yeah, looks like he is leaving now, going to do this next grunt fight. You get a nice free heal out of this, so you don't even have to enter the Pokemon Center and still get healed to full, which is very convenient for us. Because we basically just, we're just about to use the last Headbutt PP that we have, so getting that PP back from the free heal, uh, really good. Actually, we've already used that because... You already healed for this Radicate fight. This fight, if you're competently leveled, usually uh, is pretty easy. You can get a two shot here with just two headbutts. Ideally, you get uh, a flinch, turn one. Mm -hmm. If you're at speed, you don't usually outspeed unless you plus speed though, or get quite a few uh, speed ABs, so... You still get that two shot though, you don't have to go for the buzzy buzz as much as on the first Radicate that everyone fought on Not 9. Yeah, and also, like, we're, we're taking some time to get a bunch of experience here. Oh god, Kid Rocker getting two big birds on Route 10, you don't want to see that. <laughs> Terrifying. All right, and with that fight done, and Ergotay's evolution also, both of those runners will enter Rock Tunnel. So from one very important catching section to the next, because Rock Tunnel. Uh, can truly make or break a run. Yeah, there's so many uh, catches you want to get here. Those two onyxes are not <laughs> the catches you want to get here. <laughs> yeah, it's like the last thing you want to catch. 
But yeah, there is Kosh. There's like three main catches, plus Graveler, plus Rhyhorn in here. That's a lot. And uh, some of these are very important. The Rhyhorn is basically the most important catch in here because mm -hmm. uh, you can ride it and it increases your movement speed. And since there's no bike in this game, that's the only way you have to increase your movement speed. And Ergotage is getting a glowing Rhyhorn right off the bat. That is perfect. That is incredible. Um. T-Pat turning around to see a Cubone, which is, you know, less common than you really want. Kid Rocker getting a crab, baby! Also immediately getting trolled by the attack. Oh no. But yeah. Okay, can I just go for the right horn? Immediately select it as a ride and we'll have increased movement speed from that point onward. You really want to get the right horn as soon as possible because it starts saving you time. Immediately. The second, yeah, the second you start riding it. So uh, it is better to get it late than never, but getting it in the first room is the dream. Yeah, and Pika does have uh, a backup play where. If you don't see Rhyhorn, you can just grab Arcanine and use that as your ride Pokemon. Uh, but still, you aren't picking up the Firestone to evolve in your Growlithe until after you're already through the Rock Tunnel, and that's a lot of movement that the Rhyhorn could be saving you time on. Yeah, luckily Arcanine is faster than Rhyhorn, so that makes up for that a little bit, but Eevee version doesn't have access to uh, the Arcanine at least not this way, because it's a version exclusive. There is a way to get Arcanine in an EP version, but it's not worth it in the speedrun. Uh, <laughs> important to note that t -Pad did get the Rhyhorn here, uh, just down the first ladder, which is also very good. Won't have to worry about it, because, yeah, like Leggy just said, you don't really have a... Uh, you don't have a backup in EV. If you don't get a Rhyhorn, you're gonna walk, and that's super slow. You're going to walk, and you're going to hate it. Yep. <laughs> um, T-Pat going into the Pokemon Trader Winston fight, who sent out a Kangaskhan. Uh, Shoutouts to all obtainable Pokemon speedrunners. Yes. I feel uh, like it is a rite of passage to <laughs> wait around for 10 minutes plus to get a Kangaskhan to spawn in AOP. <laughs> Yeah, one of the one of the annoying you know, things about this Kangaskhan is that it also has Fake Out, um, yeah. which depending on d depending on how your defense is looking, can actually do a shocking amount of damage. It definitely can. Uh, luckily, both uh, T Pad and Kitrocker, I believe, have plus defense. If I remember that correctly, so they won't have to worry about it too much. Yes, plus defense. Uh, Ergote with neutral defense. Uh, Takes a little bit more damage from that, but um, yeah, this is the part of the game where you start just using those fake out turns to your advantage, setting up with X items, uh, so you don't really waste time at least. But the damage is still there, so you always have yeah. to keep that in mind. Luckily, right after this Kang's Camp fight, there is this fight against a another hiker that has a Rhyhorn, and we still have Bouncy Bubble, so that's a move that heals us. Right back to full, usually. So you do have to get through this mid-shop, which is pretty annoying since it has super effective stab, brick, brick. Yeah, luckily, uh, the burn does help. Uh, burn as a status effect, reduces the, the effective attack stat of a, the affected Pokémon by half, so... It's less bad than it could be. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. There's also a, a different strat where you just use Bouncy Bubble a couple of times, even on the Machop, so you don't get the burn. Which can be a good thing, because statuses in this game can cause some pretty severe lag during the fight. So uh, bypassing the status by just spamming Bouncy Bubble can be a good thing. 
you do need to have um, pretty good HP though, and you don't usually want to do an extra menu and heal just for this fight. So um, the burn strat, the sissy slide strat, is still the safer thing to do here. Mm -hmm. Just gonna take a look at the trackers here. Uh, Teapot did get a cube on already. Has unmarked Machop, so probably not gonna wait around for that. That would be another catch that you can get in here. Uh, Sharp and Cubone are another two of those Pokemon that take four levels to evolve, so you're not too sad not to get both of them. But of course, in general, if you see something, you do want to catch it. So if you had seen it, if you had seen it in time, probably would have gone for it. It's now resetting the spawns here by using the ladder. Probably still looking for. Yes, yeah, still looking for a Graveler. And that yeah, is a very... Fun. Yeah, sorry, that is a very, very important catch in, in Rock Tunnel. Yeah, Graveler is worth a pile of experience points, and t Pat seeing a glowing one is probably extremely excited by this. Yeah, that's definitely uh, worth getting excited over. Whew, okay, Ergotay just being able to dodge that Onyx because it uh, moved to the side. Mm -hmm. Now, Ergote still looking for a Cubone in here. And then Kid Rocker is finishing up on Route 10. And from the looks of it, has everything. Yeah, I mean, he has the same catch count as Teapot, and he's not even in Rock Tunnel yet, so... Uh... Mm -hmm. That's a really good catch count entering uh, Rock Tunnel. Very comfortable spot to be in. Also, going to use uh, the Moonstone here to evolve uh, Nidorino into Nidoking. There yeah. is a there is a strat in EV where you use the Nidoking for uh, the next portion of the game as like a, a partner Pokemon, basically the same way that Pikachu does it. Not sure if Kid Rock is going to go for it. Or if you just had that one left over Moonstone. Um, it looks like uh, he hasn't... That, that is his one Moonstone. So he hasn't uh, evolved anything yet because he oh, did yeah. not see Jigglypuff earlier. Well, yeah, but that, that then just still makes sense. If you do have a Moonstone or a Pokemon that evolves by Moonstone in your party and you didn't get the Jigglypuff, you just want to use it. Uh, yeah. Just in case you don't get a Jigglypuff later. Because then the Moonstone would just go to waste. And we don't want to see that. Yeah, who, who would be so foolish as to not use a Moonstone they picked up in their race? I'm sure that's never happened to anyone. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. For sure. So Tipa just depositing some of the fully evolved Pokemon. Just keeping the cube on, the Raihan as a ride, and of course the EV that will stay uh, the main Pokemon for quite some time still. Yeah, as previously mentioned, you do want to uh, try and cycle Pokemon out of your party because uh, every time a Pokemon levels up, that costs about two seconds. Um, so if you there's always that tension between, like, okay, taking the time to sit down and menu and remove Pokemon from my party versus not taking the time to menu, but then I'm running the risk of them leveling up. Yeah. It's a balancing act. Uh, you usually want to get... You want to be able to combine menus. So you usually want to be able to combine, like, a deposit of multiple Pokemon with maybe something else, like... You want to use the Moonstone in the same menu, or you know that you have to heal, and you also have a couple of Pokemon to deposit, so you want to combine those. Everybody's just getting super early Raihans, I love to see it, because Kid Rocker just gets one as well. Oh, hell yeah. Just another thing uh, that I noticed here, Teapad used his one and only Repel, because he got a very, very inconvenient Raihorn spawn that just blocked his way. Uh, usually only buy one repel and you use you can use that to reset 
a route, reset the spawns, uh, where there's no easy way to reset that route. Because in Rocktana, for instance, you can just use the ladders to reload the rooms and reset the spawns. But on some of the open routes, you don't have that option and you usually want to keep that rappel uh, to use it in such a circumstance. But um, since there wouldn't really have been a way around that Raihorn for T-Pad, use that rappel just to get rid of it. But we won't have that extra reset option at a later, po at a later point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how to use the one repel you pick up is definitely an interesting uh, thing to think about because, you know, I've seen, I know that for myself on Pika version, one of the things I will do is if I don't see a Nidoran in a, of either flavor on Route 10, I will probably just pop it right away just to try and make sure that I have the Nidoran uh, for the next section going forward. I've also seen people using it to avoid spawns in the mansion, because that's the last time you need to really be throwing Pokeballs at anything anyway. And everywhere in between, I've seen people using it just to have that nice reprieve from wild Pokemon spawns. Yeah. And there are just, like, like Red 10 for Pika version, there are just a couple of routes where there's some very, very important spawns that can happen and have to happen basically in order for the run to to progress. Uh, so not having that repel could be could punish T-Pat a little bit later. Possibly. Uh, we'll we'll see what happens as he finishes up the tower rival. Okay, also just coming into that fight uh, just a little bit behind here as t -Pad is finishing it up. Okay, has pulled ahead in terms of catches, 34 now compared to t -Pad's 31. So they are still very close together. But just for catch count. And uh, the stakes are pretty high for both of them because looking at the brackets, there aren't that many wildcat spots to get into round three. Uh, you really kind of have to win your race or get a really good time uh, as a second to uh, to have a good chance of staying in the upper bracket for round three. So um, both of these runners are very close in terms of scale, which means we might see some risky strats here later if uh, they can, if they believe that they can um, get that win by employing some of those risky strats. Maybe skipping, you know, a safety strat here or there that you would usually see in round one, just to get the edge over the other. All right then, Ergate now also finished with the rival fight. Uh, and T-Pad <laughs> now going into uh, another one of those meme fights in, in the run, uh, especially for EP version, because uh, he's about to face a Clefairy, and that Clefairy knows only one move, and that is Metronome. Uh, Metronome, of course, can use any move chosen randomly, and uh, if he doesn't get the headbutt flinch, yeah, we see Fury swipes, and that is very slow. Uh, doesn't do a lot of damage, but four individual hits, that takes quite some time. That's pretty annoying. Uh, so, no flinch. Not the worst thing that can happen off of Metronome, but uh, ideally you just never want to even see it roll. You want to get that flinch. Or have a way of one-shotting it, like using the Nidoking, because Nidoking you know, that has Poison Jab. Poison Jab's very effective, or super effective, excuse me. Uh, so you don't even have to worry about the Clefairy even getting to move. Uh. 
The Burger is still in, in Rock Tunnel, now catching a Zubat. Hasn't caught that yet. And that's gonna bring him to 35 catches. Going in it with two Pokeballs. Did he run out of Great Balls? Um, I'm afraid. Possibly. Yeah, that can happen uh, if you're a little bit too. Uh, too quick on the draw. Yeah, definitely did run out of Great Balls. That is so unfortunate. It's gonna have to Raz the Zubat here. Oh no, these are his last two balls in general. Oh no! Oh, okay. Well, that's first out of the fight. That is really unfortunate. Time loss to. Probably didn't realize the uh, ball situation before going into this catch. Because if you have two great balls, that Zubat catch is very likely. You, mm -hmm. you, even if you just hit it uh, without hitting the inner circle at all. But um, with two Pokeballs, that's a different story entirely, like we just saw. Anyway, T Pat now entering Hideout and doing my least favorite fight in Eevee version the Radicate fight <laughs> in Hideout. Going into this with two controllers. Wouldn't usually do this in a PP attempt. But the thing about this rat is it is fast and it doesn't die to two headbutts. So usually you would want to buzzy buzz it, but T Pat just thought of a buzzy buzz with another one of those special moves, Glitzy Glow. Uh, so he doesn't have that at his. Uh, I'm blanking on the word. Doesn't matter. He can't use it. <laughs> <laughs> Disposal. I think I was looking for it. Disposal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he doesn't have that option. He doesn't have the option to paralyze the radic uh, eradicate. So uh, usually you would go. Um... Actually, I forgot. What is the stratum EV? Doesn't really matter. Just went for 2C here. Makes it more consistent, like I said earlier. Always a nice mm -hmm. backup strat to use if you don't want to risk any. Uh, well, any bad things happening, and that Radicate can really do a lot of damage if you can't uh, take it out quickly. Yeah, coming up on the Hypno, which is the one fight where if you have a Nitto Queen, you actually have a really nice time. And Nitto Queen can just crunch this. Uh, Pika, uh, sorry, Eevee on the other hand, just goes for headbutt, hopes to not get uh, hit with a hypnosis in between. And yeah, that doesn't sadly, happen. So. Sadly, taking up Batty Bad, and I'm not naming <laughs> on that particular name, isn't worth it. <laughs> well, there wouldn't really be any other use for Batty Bad outside of that mm -hmm. one hypno, sadly. Dark type, it's okay, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it could be more useful in like a in like a partner EV alt main run, where you have to defeat Sabrina with it. Yeah, for sure. Though you know, I I wonder what the routing would be to because you probably would want to like come back and pick it up or something. And instead of theory crafting. Uh, <laughs> Kid Rocker, almost out of Rock Tunnel. Uh, Ergote, on the Hypno fight. T Pat, on his way down to the basement for my favorite segment of the game. <laughs> he has an all time classic section coming up for T Pat. <laughs> yeah, Kid, Kid Rocker, because he ran out of balls, hasn't really been able to, uh, to build his. Already quite sizable catch count, still at 34 now. Couldn't catch the Zubat. Uh, don't know if anything else useful spawned for him, but with just the couple of Pokeballs that he picked up from defeating trainers, uh, that would have been a, a hard time. You do get Ultra Balls from the Ace Trainer that you fight toward the end of uh, Rock Tunnel, but we really need those for later, for later catches, so don't want to use them in Rock Tunnel necessarily, unless you see something like a Red Charmander, maybe. Yeah, it does look like Kid Rocker's only missed uh, catch in Rock Tunnel was the Zubat, so it's not the end of the world. 
No, not at all. The Zubat is pretty good, it just evolves on one level, but it tries to learn two moves on level up, basically, or one move on level up and one on evolution. So, uh, it doesn't give a lot of experience either. It's an okay catch, but it's one of those that you don't really, you're not really gonna miss. Unless yeah. you have a low catch count, and that definitely isn't the case with Cat Rocker here. Yeah, he's still at 52 planned, which is still really nice. Because the more and more I play this game, the more and more I've realized that the goal of any Let's Go Catch route is to try to avoid having Tentacool on it. Yes. Oh, the Let's Go Runners hate Tentacool. For a reason, too. <laughs> It's just very annoying to catch. I mean, you would probably go for a tentacle before you go and revive the fossil, but... Uh, mm -hmm. So if you can avoid it, you always want to. And if you're at 52 plant catches right now without having the tentacle as one of those plant catches, that's a good spot to be in. Yeah, it looks like Ergote is actually going for near the King Strats here. Yo, let's go. And the Kid Rocker still has it in the party as well, so I assume he's gonna swap it over to First Sludge to get that nice one shot on uh, the Clefairy as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you... uh, a lot of the time you see uh, runners doing that swap in the same breath that they're using the escape rope to get out of the Pokemon Tower. Yeah, that's usually what I do in Pika. Yeah. It's just efficient menus, like I was saying earlier, where you want to combine different menu actions into one. Uh, because opening the menu always takes up time. It's an animation that plays uh, to get to the menu. So opening, as, opening it as little as possible is the way to go. <laughs> Teapad now doing the first fight of the little, of the little boss gauntlet here in the mid game. Uh, Jesse and James, first refight with them. They now have fully evolved Pokemon, which makes this fight a lot more dangerous than the first time. Do you want to explain it? Yeah, so uh, Weezing and Arbok coming in in, in their mid 30s, in their low 30s, have some really nasty moves. You've got Toxic, you've got Dark Pulse, you've got Poison Jab. So at the end of the day, our primary goal is to knock out uh, either one of them as fast as possible, and usually Arbok. Um, for the Eevee side, uh, we're trying to set up the Eevee from the looks of it. Or are, yes. we, or are we using Rhyhorn here? Uh, if you can, you can use Rhyhorn if your EV is bad. Uh, Pika does use Rhyhorn for this fight, uh, yep. but uh, usually you just set up the EV um, on the special side and you're using Jetsy Glow, which is a psychic type move. So it's super effective on both the Arbok and the Weezing. Uh, and it also sets up a light screen for you. So. Uh, the Weezing is going to deal less damage, which is nice. The Arbok attacks physically, so it's not going to get affected by that light screen. Yeah. And that is really the main reason why I want to take it out uh, first, because the damage potential is, is so much higher. That is a lot of poison being thrown around. Luckily, you know, we, in our various shopping trips, we've picked up a handful of antidotes to take care of situations exactly like this. You and now we're all... It, sorry, uh, t pad is down to just one ended out here, so we'll have to keep that in mind going forward. Yep. Uh, now we're on to mid-archer. There is no good archer fight. <laughs> um, opens with a wheezing, with a uh, gold bat hiding in the back. Uh, and as, as, as we've all seen, like... The core strategy for a lot of these harder fights is just set up your Pokemon as fast as you can and then l leverage their boosted stats to just completely destroy the fight. Yeah, that's just Which... always a 
a good thing to do for Pokemon speedruns because uh, yeah. you don't want you don't want to be dealing just a little too. There's not quite enough of damage because then your enemy can potentially heal. So yeah. it's ideally better to just set up so that you're powerful enough to get those one shots. Yeah, the fact that a lot of traders, especially later on in the game, have various healing items that they can throw around means that one shots are always optimal. Definitely. Ergate now done with Justin James also has to heal. He also got poisoned on Eevee at least. Uh, meanwhile, T-Pad basically one fight ahead, done with Archer, uh, healing to full once again for the third fight here, which is the first Giovanni fight. And this one is pretty interesting in the Eevee version. I do think it's interesting in both versions because both of the strats are pretty, pretty cool. Uh, and we're gonna see Eevee go into this alone, so one C, whereas Pika version would go into this with uh, two controllers. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna use the first turn again to set up here with the axe attack because this Persian likes to go for fake out like I just did. And then we're gonna use Sizzy side because this Persian has slash and that can hit pretty hard if it crits like just like that. Uh, and we're gonna finish off with another Sizzy side or potentially that was close dropped into red there uh Ooh. yeah Whew. close call but since you know t was plus defense was probably pretty confident that he could live that and uh, now you can just heal back to full with bouncy bubble after that persian oh no never mind <laughs> we had a situation we had a situation the other uh, in, in round one where uh the raihon actually lived the bouncy bubble and i thought for a second that that was happening again, but it was just the pixelated health bar for me. Don't give me a heart attack like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, and then over on the Pika side, we just set up Pikachu to plus six and uh, double kick our way through both of Giovanni's Pokemon. Uh, T Pat is out, done with the rocket hideout. There is one optional stop he has here. Uh, we'll see if he goes for the extra Ultra Balls hidden away a little bit out of your way. Seems like he will do that, yes. Uh, yeah. Still has a couple of things to catch. Let me just count them. Looking at his plan count, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more catches. Usually you have eight Ultra Balls for, that, uh, for those late game catches. So picking up the extras here... It's just a little bit of added safety in case something else doesn't show up and he has to go for some hard to catch uh, backup catches. Or you know. if he has a Joy-Con moment. Yeah, yeah. Balls can just fly off sometimes. We've seen that a couple of times today already. So having those extra Ultra Balls is definitely a good thing. Um, that stack that he just picked up, uh, that was five Ultra Balls. There's another pickup that we usually get on Pokemon Tower, that is three. Uh, I could t potentially, I could see t uh, just skipping that now because he picked up the five extra ones. So he already would have two more than he would usually have. But it, of course, would be extra safe to just pick them both up. Yeah, and a lot of that's going to come down to uh, runner confidence in their uh, state of their Joy-Cons. Uh, I, like you said, you know, if you're behind on catches and you need to start going for some of the risky ones, I could definitely see runners be like, no, I'm going to pick up the extra ones because I'm going to be throwing some double, double ultra catches. Yeah, and I mean, considering that T-Pad has been having a little bit of trouble today uh, with, the, with the throws, uh, I wouldn't be too surprised if he also picked up those three yeah. ultra balls. Ultra Balls and Tower. Ergote also going for the backup Ultra Balls here. Mm -hmm. And, like, I don't blame I either of them for doing it with how close they are in yeah. when, it's, when all is said and done. Um, whew! T-Pat almost getting trolled by the spinner there. And that spinner pass is pretty uh, tight, pretty dangerous. Uh, and I do believe she has, like, 
three Pokemon too. Uh, so you really want to avoid the spinner. Yeah, it's wild to me how the two trainers in Pokemon Tower you have to fight are like the only trainers in the tower with one Pokemon. Yeah, I mean, it works out well for us. We have to fight less. Mm -hmm. I, I just, just always forget how many Pokemon the other trainers have until I accidentally run into them, and I'm like, oh no, wait, all these po <laughs> all these trainers have a million Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? You, because you never fight them as a speedrunner, right? You always pass them yeah. by, so if you hit one of them and you've never hit them before, and suddenly there's like three or four Pokemon on, on just a random trainer, then that, that's a, very annoying, especially in mm -hmm. in a race setting, because you're just going to have to take that, take that L and defeat that trainer. Yep. But just not taking care of the second required trainer battle in here. The three auto ball pickup is right behind this trainer, so uh, you may see him go for that. And Ergote now entering tower. There's really only one catch that you want to get in here. Tipa, by the way, skipping the ultra ball pickup. Uh, and that is the ghastly that Ergote just got. Did t get a Ghastly? I didn't see it. No, it's not marked, uh, so... Yeah, t does not have Ghastly marked, but there is still the chance that you find it after the cutscene here, uh, mm -hmm. because you do have to run down, pick up the rare candy, and that gives Ghastly a little bit of time to spawn. I guess they're definitely nice to have. Uh, it's just one more Pokémon that evolves within one level. Uh, and it also has pretty high speed, which it's high enough to get away from the Snorlax that is coming up pretty soon. Uh, and it also needs experience, unlike the Eevee that usually can also get away from that Snorlax. So ideally after Tower, you want to be able to deposit the Eevee so it doesn't get any uh, useless level ups. But if you don't have the Ghastly, you can't really do that because there's no other Pokemon that's going to be fast enough to consistently be able to run away from Snorlax. Mm -hmm. t didn't get a Ghastly here, which is unfortunate. Uh, has now marked Tentacool on his tracker. That's oh, the, you yeah. hate to see it. <laughs> At some point, you just have to do it. Catchrod is getting away from you. And yeah. now doing uh, the next Jesse and James fight, very close to each other, these two. And very similar fights in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, especially in Eevee version. He just, once again, set up extra special attacks for Eevee. Use Glitzy Glow. Sadly, or not, what makes this fight more dangerous is that uh, I'm pretty sure both of the enemy Pokemon have gotten some additional moves and they're also just higher levels. So for instance, uh, Weezing now has access to Flamethrower and I believe also Thunderbolt, which it doesn't have in the Hideout Jesse and James fight. <laughs> That's just always something to keep in mind. Speaking of that Hideout Jesse and James fight, that is what Kid Rocker is doing now. As Ergote has finished um, the second required channeler, skipping the Ultra Balls, but picking up the backup Hyper Potion. Yeah, this Hyper Potion is pretty convenient to grab if you're running low on healing items. Uh, it's just another one. This is a very good healing item that's right there. There's another pretty convenient one in Hideout, but usually at that point, you haven't used too many super potions yet because uh, those three boss fights in Hideout is where a lot of those super potions um, will get used usually. So this hyper potion, good pickup, uh, especially also good for a couple of fights later in the run, like the bad archer fight that you are <laughs> alluding to. And is now also going to fight uh, Jesse and James here in tower. Meanwhile, T-Pad already flying to Cerulean. And it's about to challenge that Snorlax that I was talking about. Yeah, in 
Uh, this game, the way that they handle sort of the static boss encounters, the Snorlaxes, the legendary birds, and Mewtwo is actually really interesting. Uh, because unlike traditional wild Pokemon, where you just run up to them and you just start chucking Pokeballs, uh, you actually have to do a bit of a combat scene with these sort of rare Pokemon first. Um, it's yeah. actually a really interesting mechanic, but uh, they do give us the ability to run away, and so we're just going to do that. Yeah, the Snorlax is really tanky. It, I mean, Snorlax just has very high special defense just from its base stats, and then also gets a defense buff for this fight. So it would just take forever to uh, to beat it down, and then it's also not a very easy catch. So it's just generally not worth to go for the catch, unless you're really desperate, which you sh usually shouldn't be at this point in the run. Um, yeah, like, you'd have to have made some deep concessions already to even be considering that. Yeah. Goes for the Route 16 Dodo here, which uh, in a race heading I think is always the correct choice. Cutting down the bush is a little slow, but you don't want to be in a situation where you're on Route 17 and the Dodo hasn't showed up again, and you ignored that Route 16 Dodo. Uh, yeah, like at this point, there's a couple of Pokemon that you really want to be picking up. Um, in addition to just finishing off uh, your the remaining catches you have planned. Uh, the Do Duo is not hard required, but is super nice for one fight in particular. Um, you desperately are hoping you see a Ponyta. And then after that, it's just whatever you need from this route for your catch count. I'm just gonna do another trainer skip here to get onto the route, just hugging the fence there. To avoid that trainer's uh, line of sight. And is now hoping for a Ponyta and a Psyduck and a Pidgey as well. It gets the Pidgey too. This Pidgey is very valuable because it will evolve into Pidgey up within two levels. So you get two evolutions very quickly. Because um, mm -hmm. if you did go for the early Pidgey on Route 6, you don't really get the chance to get that evolution to Pidgeot because you already have those two first bird evolutions covered. <laughs> Keypad didn't though, so... Uh... Looks like he actually yeah. also needed that. Uh, he can now skip the Firestone evolution um, that you would usually go for if you need to even out your catch count at this point in the game. Yeah. And, like, honestly, Pidgey on this round is still probably the easiest thing in the world to catch. Oh my god, yes. that's a horse so far away. Kind of unfortunate to see it all the way back there, because, you know, it takes time to get to it. We don't want to see that. Uh, but also gets a glowing Psyduck right next to it, so uh, it's going to be done here in a second. <laughs> And we'll that means, oh, hmm? uh, I just, I'm, I'm looking at Tipat's tracker and he has unmarked Tentacool and marked the fossil. <laughs> Yo, let's go! <laughs> uh, probably is getting low on Ultra Balls and doesn't want to go for a Tentacool. So uh, I guess we're, I guess we're going to see a little bit of Omastar action here. Yeah, Tipit is just getting trolled by attacks. That's probably why he's running low. Ergotay also just cut it very close to that uh, optional Ooh. trainer. Yeah, but there, there was a horsey over there, so like I understand wandering over. Oh, definitely. I, I also would go for the horse. It was just very close to, <laughs> to the trainer. Yeah. And, and course... hitting it. Yeah, hitting, sorry, hitting a trainer in this part of the game is really unfortunate because you don't really have a main Pokemon at this point. Eevee has basically fallen off even if you still have it in the party. Um, and we don't have our late game main yet. So hitting an optional here usually wastes a bunch of time. You don't want to see that ever. Yeah. 
Um, I've run into various trainers between here and the next route we're going to go down in. Who boy have I turned off my game in immense amounts of frustration. <laughs> yeah. It's so punishing to hit those. Uh, t is now gonna take the time to evolve the Ponyta immediately. The Rapidash is so fast that just taking this extra time ends up being worth it. Uh... It also means you can get the Rhyhorn out of your party so you don't yeah. have to if it's still alive, you don't have to worry about it getting experience. Yeah, that's another nice thing about early evolving the ponyta like this. But yeah, all of our runners are slowly circling towards the end of their catches, uh, which means we're finally getting into, like, the second phase of the game, as it were which is the back third of the game. <laughs> yeah, the late game of this speedrun plays out much more like a standard Pokemon speedrun. It's a lot mm -hmm. more heavy on the fights. Because uh, you don't want the catches. You got what you needed. You got those 50 Pokemon registered in the Pokedex. We're not at the point quite yet. Catches are going to be... Uh, very important for probably another half hour. Yeah. Um, and Kid Rocker is making his way back to uh, the Pokemon Tower, hoping to find the Ghastly there, and then do those Route 17 catches as well. Um, T-Pat has made it to this game's equivalent of the Safari Zone, the Pal Park. And is about to pick up uh, Sea Skim. I was kind of thinking. I was kind of thinking you were gonna call it Surfy Surf. <laughs> no, that's the only one I actually know. Okay. <laughs> well. Uh... Yeah. This game is just going to open up the sea, which uh, lets us go to Cinnabar without any additional badges. I was talking about this earlier. Usually you would need, I believe, Koga's badge to even go on the water mm -hmm. in uh, in older games. But in, in this latest remake, there, no, there are no badge requirements. If you can reach this point in the game, you can just go onto the water. And we're going to use that to catch some very high level Pokemon. Yeah, instead of making it badge requirements, they hard-locked everything around the Rocket Pokemon Tower side quest, um, because you won't be able to get uh, the Pokemon Flute to get past the Snorlaxes to get down to Fuchsia. I said I'm getting pixels on the CP of the Staryu. 1096, thank you, Sheep. Uh, good, good CP. Slightly above average, yeah. uh, so let's hope that t -Pet gets a good set distribution as well. Okay, also getting a Pidgey now. Uh, apparently hasn't gotten that yet. Is three catches ahead of, of t -Pet, uh, but still on Route 17 as of right now. Yeah, Sayo, of course, will be our late game main. So you really wanted to have good stats. And the CP uh, value is at least an indicator of how good the Sayo is going to be. Uh, but you're really only going to be able to tell it for sure um, when you see the stats, which should happen pretty soon. Uh, t is going to level it up with uh, some rare candies and evolve it with the water stone he just pick up, picked up in mansion. But first, he's gonna catch a coughing. Yeah, so the, the way that CP works is it's based off of the Pokemon stats and their various IVs and stuff. And since we paid the medium in Celadon to lock in the Starmie's nature and 
Uh, we have it lured, so we know what its level is 100 with 100% certainty. The only real variables we have in that star use stats are its IVs. So the higher the CP, the higher the subtotal of all its IVs are, though where those are distributed is all up in the air. Yeah, but of course, the higher the value, the higher the CP value, the more likely it is that you have good IVs in those stats that are very important, like special attack and speed, specifically. <laughs> yeah, though, you know, we'll never say no to a little bit of extra defense as well. Oh no, of course not, but you never want to be in that situation where uh, you have 31 IV attack and 0 IV special attack. <laughs> yeah! Alright, T-Pet now doing the star menu, so I'm gonna try to take a look at the stats. Yeah, so that's okay. an 81 special attack. Uh, Amazing speed. Yeah. On the side. Uh, that's good. Special attacks kind of so so. You never really want to see a 70 at level 43, uh, but this should be perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Also got a speed AV right there, a special attack AV right there on the level up, that's gonna help. Uh, that and is a... Yeah. So that's also uh, a pretty darn good star, you. Yeah, that is, that is truly slightly above average. 1062 <laughs> is the average CP value that a star me can get. I guess I should say... No, no, it is just, it is just average. Uh, yeah. So this is just slightly above that. Uh, I'm also going to take a look at... Okay, one... I didn't quite see that again because of pixels. Uh, looked like 116, 118, something like that. Uh, at level 46. A uh, T-Pad star stats went by way too fast for me. Uh, let me see what I can do. Yeah, but T-Pad has very, very high speed, as Etiquette is putting on in chat, may get a chance of outspeeding uh, on level 5, uh, because you usually need to set up an, an, an X speed, because Rival's uh, Raichu is gonna outspeed. But if your star has really high speeds, like 140 at that point, you don't need that X speed, you're just gonna outspeed the Raichu. Also, T-Pad getting punished by already having used his <laughs> Repel. <laughs> Oh, no. he did not have a way of uh, despawning that magmar. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so look, uh, looking at the playback, that is a 116 special attack on t yeah. army. That's That is mid special attack, I want to say. Yeah. Um, and I'll try and keep an eye out for Ergote's uh, star as well. Yeah, it's doing the Evo now. I, I missed the star use stats, but uh, you can always catch a glimpse of the stats uh, when the runners go to teach Scald. Ooh, t pack got paralyzed. Oh, Sammy fainted. Oh, that's not what you want to see. Oh, Ted. Uh, it's so rough. This fight is very annoying uh, because it's, it's the first fight that Stami, the Stami does and it is immediately against an Electro that has Thunderbolt and that Thunderbolt can deal major damage. It can paralyze you. Sometimes it can just straight up kill you with a crit uh, and there's really nothing you can do about it. If I just revive the Stami, he's going to send it back in. But it might okay. just die again. So, uh, I pulled up Ergote's star as well. Um, at the time of the Scald teaching, that's a 119 special attack and a 124 uh, speed. So also a that's fairly fast good. start. Yeah, yeah. Uh, speed is good, special attack's better than for t -Pet, so even though the CP was lower, might be a better star overall. Mm -hmm. And now also on Ted. So, really, Ergote has uh, taken the lead, I believe. Especially if he, especially if he gets through this fight smoother than T Pad, who has the star die again. Oh no! Oh, oh, that's so unfortunate. 
Oof. Okay. Uh, that was really close uh, for Ergote, but manages to survive the electrode just fine. Let's see what happens with Mach. Uh, t pad is also now missing oh. that Mach experience. Uh, and since he isn't catching any Pokemon after this point, I hope he get. I hope he hits level 48 by Sabrina. Mm -hmm. This could be bad. Um, I guess what t -Pat could do is if he could pick up, like, the Lapras candy or the Mansion candy here as a backup just in case. Yeah, um, I'm not sure. Maybe he knows the experience route a little better and knows if, if that even is necessary or if you just still gonna hit 58 but maybe he should pick up the mansion candy because the the Lapras candy you always have to pick up in EV is not skippable like it is in, in Pikachu sometimes mm -hmm. uh, so the only backup he could possibly have is that extra mansion candy down here in the basement yeah um so we'll see we'll, we'll see what uh, T Pat decides to do here. Whether or not he feels he needs the extra candy uh, with his current experience situation. Oh, agitating an optional. Oh no! Was commenting on it as we spoke. Uh, went for a greedy pass on the one like a one cycle pass and uh, was just a little bit too slow. This optional is also very annoying. Has an electabuzz. Uh, Ironically, Crisis hit it in the last race of round one, and now Agate hits it in the first race of round two as well. This is super annoying because now you have to set up the second controller, have to set up to plus two again. Has yeah, this you're... next special attack to spare, but uh, it's just still very annoying. Yeah, like... <sighs> The good news is, you know, a little bit of misfortune all around. No one runner is really getting hammered by the RNG. You know, if if things are going to go wrong, better it be distributed across all the runners to keep the race really exciting. Am I right, chat? Am I right? Oh, definitely. Uh, this basically undoes the lead that Argate had built up uh, with all of the catches that he's had. Uh, for too bad, which definitely is unfortunate for Argate, but it keeps the race close. So, yeah. um, though, uh, Ergo T A might not be as far back as we think because one of those catches T Pet has to do is the Omanite, yes. according to his current plans. Which I'm not sure why he hasn't done that yet. Uh. I, I mean, it makes sense. You kind of have to go down to the bottom of the island to do it. So if you're coming from the north, you hit the mansion, you hit the gym, and then you go all the way down. But you are losing out on the experience from Blade on the fossil. So mm. me, maybe he's just confident that he'll still get the entire level by uh, Sabrina. Yeah, uh, Furious just uh, saying in chat that he had said it's optimal to do it after Blade, which... Sure. If he has that figured out, I, I believe him. Yeah, like, it makes sense for, uh, to me, at least, in terms of, like, how you would have to do the movement. Yeah, and t just, as a runner, has incredible game knowledge, so... Yeah. I'll take his word for it. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and on that note, uh, definitely give all three of our runners a follow. Uh, if you're on PC, you can click all their names in the stream title, drop that follow, give them some love. They are all three incredible runners of this wonderful game. Also, give my wonderful co-commentator a follow. Also, Leggy. <laughs> yeah, what about me? Yeah. People should follow you as well. If they're already following yeah. me, I feel I, I would feel bad if they didn't follow you as well. <laughs> uh, 
But yeah, uh, T-Pout through Blade, Ergo Tay on Blade, Kid Rocker talking to a duck. Uh, about to go pick up uh, Sea Skin. Yeah, this one cutscene in, in, in Fuchsia, uh, it's, it's such an awkward point in the run. Because uh, you still have to mesh through it, but it's like 30 seconds long uh, of just Eevee or Pikachu approaching different Pokemon in this park and making some noise. <laughs> Right, of all the actually unskippable cutscenes in this run, that one feels like the one that should have been one of the skippable cutscenes the most. Yeah. <laughs> Keep that now, reviving the Armonites. I don't know if this is the first time we've actually seen someone go for the fossil in the tournament. It may be. At least I can't remember uh, seeing yeah. anyone go for it yet. Yeah, I've tried to watch as many of the races as I could, but, you know, I did not catch them all, unfortunately. And we have Joker. Kid Rocker. <laughs> Same brain cell. Oh, that looked low. Yeah, that was a 119. 1019. You don't want to see that. That is way below average. Uh, let's hope that all of the all of the IVs are concentrated on special attack and speed. Mm -hmm. It can be much lower than this. It can be below 1000. Uh, but let's hope we don't see that in the tournament like at all. Yeah, so... Uh, actually, in the tournament Discord, it was pointed out that a 31 special attack, 31 speed, and zeros everywhere else is a 1032. Really? That's... that's... okay. That's kind of surprising. Yeah. But yeah, this means that uh, Kid Rocker can't have that. Can't have 31 IV in both stats. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure if you wanted that with just paper thin defenses then. And we'll see how those stats are distributed here in a moment. Uh, going to catch a coughing first. Apparently, just waiting for it to move. Meanwhile, T-Pad on search, and Ergotia also just pulling up to the gym. Uh, this is the point in the in the run where we just clean up all of the all of the gyms that we haven't done yet. Uh, mm -hmm. And since we're level forty five, level forty six here, and and Sarge has level twenties, Pokemon, um, this is a very easy setup. Just... Never heard of her. No, no, no. I'm unfamiliar. <laughs> All right, Ergate, uh, sorry, Kid Rocker, <laughs> said the wrong name. Uh, just evolving the Machoke here from the coughing experience, probably now going to do the menu here. I don't think he's looking to catch anything else in Mansion. No, he's just going to postpone the menu until right before Ted. And T-Pad is, meanwhile, doing the post search menu where we immediately teach Thunderbolt because that is the move that you get from search, another one of those extremely good moves that you just get given in a gym. So uh, really runs out Stami's moveset very well. If I recall correctly from the classic album oh. To Be a Master, Thunderbolt is in fact a great electric attack. It is very great. Uh, this... <laughs> okay, going for the Skull Teach while it's still Staryu, so I can't really uh, compare Stami stats, but I saw 81 special attack on Staryu at level 46. That is super low. We're talking yeah. like... Uh, that's less than 10 IV for sure in special attack. Oh, jeez. So, yeah, um... 
Kid Rocker it might have a bit of a time on some of the spicier ranges that this game has to offer. Yeah, luckily there are safety threats, especially for those fights, but uh, it's just, it's an extra nuisance if you have to make up for that bad stami that you caught. Uh, chat seems to think it is not just lower than like that uh, 10 IV range. Uh, chat seems to think it's like a zero or one. Oh no. Oh. Yeah. That's so bad. Let's hope he gets plenty of AVs to make up for it at least a little bit because. Zero IV, that has some really unfortunate ranges. That has a range on the Ninetales on Blaine, that has a range uh, on the Marowak on Champ. If you go for Psychic, at least. Uh, oh, no. We don't want to see that. We really don't. Yeah, in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I have a bit of a story about that Marowak. I, um, so, while everyone's doing... Well, I guess Kid Rocker is on tap, which is a pretty important fight, but uh, Ergot and T-Pad is just, uh, are just uh, heating up Erica's gym. So I was on comps with uh, T-Pad in round one, where I revealed the fact that the Marowak can be arranged to him. He hadn't heard of that before. He has never seen it before. And five days later, T-Pad misses that range in one of his PP attempts. I was so there for that. Yeah, apparently I kind of cursed him, which I am very sorry about. Uh, my bad luck is starting to spread to other people. So any other spicy ranges you want to bring up, just to, you know, get them out of the way? <laughs> um, I mean, the most obvious one is obviously the Dragonite on Lance, but that one is, you know, pretty well known. Uh, another sort of well known one also is the Gyarados on, also on Lance, uh, can be a psychic range. But both, both the Marowak and the Gyarados, there are easy backups. You can just Thunderbolt the Gyarados and Scald the Marowak to get around those ranges. Um, but of course, sometimes you need to risk it, you know? Yeah. Um, I think now's about the time, because I don't think we've mentioned the word turnaround in this uh, commentary session. So do you want to explain why you don't just go for the safer moves and risk the ranges. Yeah, so, um... This game employs a mechanic called friendship. Uh, so the Pokémon is gonna gain friendship with you over time, just by uh, using it in important fights, by using sp specific items on it, like uh, X items or rare candies, and if it hits a certain friendship threshold, it's gonna start to kind of show, wanna show its affection in battle. So if it hits a super effective move, it's gonna turn around in battle and look at you for a second and there's gonna be a text box that's... No, there's not, there's no text box. I think I'm thinking about something else here, but it's an extra yeah, animation there... that plays uh, that takes... There is a text box. Yeah, there is a text box, okay. Uh, got a little confused there for a second, but uh, it is getting kind of late over here. Yeah, no worries, no worries. <laughs> um, but yeah, you get that extra turnaround for every turn that you hit a super effective move, so you really want to avoid going for those super effective moves, especially in the last three fights of the run. Um, Agatha, Lance, and Champion. So if you can avoid using Thunderbolt or Scald on Gyarados and Marowak, you usually will want to go for it, but uh, with a bad Starmie like Kid Rockers, you may have to do it if you um, don't want to risk missing that and potentially dying on those very last fights of the run. So 
So speaking of, you know, missing and dying on various parts of the run, uh, T-Pat is on the blue fight with a horse, uh, which means that to get through that executor had to hit a hydro pump. I mean, sorry, a fire blast. Yes. Uh, if you don't have Dotrio, which T-Pat does have, uh, so we have just either run out of X attacks or simply elected not to do it. Um, usually the best backup is using the Rapidash, which is always going to be in second slot anyway. So you don't like have to move the party around. But uh, Fire, Fire Blast is, I believe, 80% uh, accurate. Might be 85. But uh, if that misses, the blue fight can go sideways fast because that executor can set up light screens so your damage is reduced uh, so you're gonna struggle even more with taking it out and also taking out the charizard that comes out after and i believe you can also just attack the starmie and like deal some very serious damage uh, gosh there, there is a lot going on on the screen right now we've got uh t-pat in the bad archer fight we've got ergo tay with the easy blue fight and we had Kid Rocker get confused by the Magmar, but is now set up, hopefully, to oh, take no. out the rest of Blade. Oh no, t got paralyzed. Oh no. Oh, you don't want to see that. Oh god, t what's happening? So yeah, that's, um, that's one of the openings you can get in the Bad Archer double, double fight. Uh, you can get hit by Thunderbolt, and Thunderbolt, of course, has a small chance of paralyzing you, and if you do get paralyzed, that puts you in a bit of a, a, a bit of a bind. You you really want to get rid of that because you don't want to get outsped by the enemy, and you also don't want to have turns where you um, are fully paralyzed and just can't move. But since you're constantly getting hit by other thunderbolts or sucker punch, or if the Gorbat comes out at some point by by crunch, you there's really no good spot to heal that. I mean, this is probably a decent spot because a Radicate usually does go for Sucker Punch and that doesn't work. Um, if you don't attack, as we just saw there, the Weezing Dark Pulse doesn't do nearly as much, uh, nearly enough to take out the Starmie, and that's... Okay. Good. No crits. Everything went well. Uh, but that is just a very rough opening for the Archer fight. You don't want to see that. Yeah, on Kid Rocker's side, did eat a Flare Blitz, uh, but otherwise had a very clean blade fight uh, on his way to cleaning up the rest of the Gym Gauntlet uh, that is up ahead. It looks like Ergo got uh, self-destruct protect opening for Archer, which is definitely not as risky as getting the Thunderbolt opening, but also uh, usually ends up leading to a five-turn Archer fight. And mm -hmm. since this fight is so laggy, every turn that you can save overall will save quite a bit of time. Um, oh yeah. Like, there's something about the way that the AI works that is really well optimized for one-on-one -on -one battles, but the moment you add in any additional AI trainers, the game just takes forever. Yeah, and I mean, this is, a, this is a true double battle, so you have three AI trainers that all have to be... Uh, well, the game has to decide for them every turn and it takes forever to the point where there's literally like five seconds of just camera pans while the game tries to figure out what it's gonna do right uh but it does look like t-pat ergote both through both are honestly really really close to each other at this point yeah t-pat is getting a couple of those evolutions just one catch behind now and uh just behind Ergote going into this teleporter. So they're probably within 30 seconds of each other uh, right now. And there's still so much that can shake up the run in the late game. So this 
race is probably one of the closest we've had all tournament. Oh yeah. And this is only the first race of round two. Um, there is so much room for more and more and more close races like this going forward. Oh, absolutely. Okay, now going into the last Jesse and James fight, the easiest one, probably. Uh, <laughs> you just psychic both of them, and uh, the only thing that can go wrong is that Weezing uses Thunderbolt on Starmie. But you can hear that. You can also get paralyzed by that Thunderbolt, though, which is annoying because then you have to do an extra menu or just hear the paralysis in battle and go into the Giovanni fight with low health, which isn't too risky. But ideally, you just don't want to see it. Ideally, you just want to go uh, see it go for a Thunderbolt on Dodrio. If you have Rapid Ash in the party, you can actually just use Stomp turn two to uh, potentially get the flinch on Weezing so it never even gets to attack. Actually, also just turn one here. Yeah, still gets the T-Ball out, but no paralysis, okay. Or T-Pad, so you can just heal this now if he wants to. Uh, it doesn't look like he will, though. It's not strictly necessary, but now he will probably have to heal before Sabrina. Yeah, which is always a little bit frustrating as, you know, you've been mentioning time and time again. The fewer menus you can do by doing as many things as you can in the same menu, uh, the, be the better. So, like, if you do have to heal going into Sabrina, you, you really, really, really want to be at a point where you're just depositing all of your remaining Pokémon and just never having to touch uh, the Pokémon box again. Yeah, at some point you just really want to be done with catches. <laughs> yeah. And that is that point, usually. Uh, T-Pad, of, of course, still uh, missing the Omanite Evo here. Um, that's the one difference between T-Pad and Ergate in terms of catch count. Kid Rocker actually also ended up going for the Omanite. So, uh, we'll also have to evolve that through experience. I'm not actually sure when Almanite evolves, like on what fight, if you revive it after Blaine. But as long as that happens on Sabrina at the latest, uh, that is fine. Yeah, this Giovanni fight is also pretty for, uh, pretty pretty straightforward. Probably also the easiest one out of out of the Giovanni fights. You just set up one extra attack and and scored everything. Yeah. And now we get the Master Ball. We're all basically done catching, so we're just going to hold on to that as a trophy of victory. Um, we're going to run out of here and pick up our last two Pokemon, which, conveniently, there are two gift Pokemon in Saffron City, the Lapras and the Porygon. Yes, and since, like I said, EV version still needs to grab one uh, rare candy anyway, and there is a rare candy in the same room as the Lapras gift, that makes the Lapras gift and candy pick up just that much more convenient, since you can combine the movement, basically. Uh, there it is. Ergate picking up the rare candy. And then picking up the Lapras. With T-Pad literally just a second or two behind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are neck and neck outside of T-Pad's final evolution. Yeah, yeah. Rocker now on Erica and will then also enter self call right after that.
has been having a pretty rough run uh, with some bad luck. Yeah, that's the Paragon gift mm -hmm. right in the middle of town. Um, yeah. Which is going to be the 50th. Yeah? Sorry. Yeah, you can, you can see the Porygon uh, spawn on Route 8 outside of Celadon, but it's super rare. And you're getting one for free anyway, so... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's never worth it to catch that Paragon, for sure. Yeah. That's just so much faster than a, a catch would ever be. Uh... Both of our leading runners here now doing the final shop of the run. Stocking up on X Adam, stocking up on some full heals if they if they need them. Uh, Tipa probably will need them <laughs> with how much uh, <laughs> how many status conditions have been uh, put on him throughout this run. <laughs> and as Kid Rocker does my favorite piece of tech in this game, which is flying from Erica's gym back to Celadon City is faster than riding your horse out of town. Yeah, mostly because of the um, bush that you have to cut mm -hmm. to get out of Erica's gym. And of course it's also just a little... It's, it's, it's a long way up to the exit of town, so... Yeah. Just mashing A on the map, flying to the same town you're already in, mm -hmm. is fast. Uh, well, we're now in Sabrina's gym, which means it's all about hitting those teleporters right in the center, because if you don't, you get that little bit of a an extra animation where the player character adjusts itself to hit the center so that the teleport animation can play. And if you just hit the center by yourself, you save that like second per teleporter. Yeah. Both of our leading runners doing a fantastic job of doing the one. And as I say it. <laughs> you call that a commentator's curse? And I was trying to offer a commentator's compliment. <laughs> Yeah, that's usually what causes the cars anyway. Yeah. Sabrina. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sabrina's actually a really interesting fight. Uh, her lead Pokemon is Mr. Mime. Uh, Mr. Mime is, does the dual screens. So, in theory, uh, the optimal fight is you do a bit of setup and then you start pressing Scald and Mr. Mime has not hit uh, light screens so you can just tear through Sabrina's team. However... Yeah. As we see on Team Outside, we get the expected outcome, which is turn one light screen. If you're incredibly unlucky, uh, you can see a turn two light screen, which honestly, e even uh, the length of time it takes aside, it is such a troll because you're like, oh my god, am I going to get it? And then again, it's just like, nah. Uh, I think T-Pat must click now. Okay, never mind. I, I got a little confused about the best strat there. I used an extra turn to heal, but it still worked out perfectly fine. Let Green wear off a turn early, but because uh, he outspeeds the Mr. Mime, uh, Mr. Mime doesn't get the chance to set light screen up again. You can now just sweep through the rest of the team. And Urgate is just behind there. Apparently didn't get a screen. No, did get a screen. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think both of them got the turn one screen based it off is... of how they went through it. Yeah, it's very unlikely to never see that screen at all. Uh, sometimes Mr. Mime opens with Psychic. Uh, and then you just have to adjust. But uh, yeah, the light screen opening is like the choice 90% of the time for the, A for the AI. Yeah, over on Kid Rocker's side, he's on our third bad archer fight of the night. We'll see what happens here. Um, as T Pat's Almanite is devolving, and. Oh! oh! Nice! Got the best opening for Kid Rocker. So I have to start no protect. We love to see that. If Cubone plays ball now, uh, we could see the potential best archer outcome, but I'm aware that I probably just jinxed it. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, it is possible that uh, you line things up correctly so that uh, Cubone goes for double bone, bone Barang on the Raticate here. Well. Went for head bat. That's that. <laughs> Can no longer get the three turn now. It's gonna be a four turn. Even if you get, like, incredible crit ranges? I'm not sure. Maybe double crit out of Bumerang would work here, but uh, that's not going to happen without energy fo uh, focus energy, sorry. That's fair. So yeah, both uh, T-Bat and Ergate uh, are done with their catches, have deposited all of the Pokemon that they no longer need, and uh, have flown to Fuchsia to finally fight Koga. Because... Whoa. Oh no. Good rocker got okay. the sucker punch at the last minute. I'm going to miss out on the rat experience, unfortunately. Uh, if that is the only thing he misses out on, that should still be fine. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, what's happening right now? Isn't it? It's not. Okay. Looks like we're getting a DNF here out of Kit Rocker. Unfortunate. Would have gotten a free heal here. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, like, sometimes it's just not meant to be. Yeah. If Kid Rocker is feeling up to it, you know, the invitation to join us for an interview is open. But when you have moments like that, you know, no fault or shame if you're just wanting to step away and, you know, not think about this game for a little bit. <laughs> oh yeah, this game can be incredibly frustrating. Huh? Okay, so, Koga's gym. Uh, Koga, being the sneaky ninja gym leader, uh, loves to use uh, poison moves, loves to use evasion, loves to use protect. Uh, this gym is designed to be the troll gym. Yeah, this is such a... such a potentially annoying gym. Um, you can theoretically get a, get a perfect gym here, uh, where you get no unnecessary protects out of Caden and Koga, but it can also go very wrong. Also interesting to see T-Pat on very low health here with the Sarmi. Yeah, apparently just... I don't know what happened. I didn't heal after Sabrina, okay. Yeah, I guess, you know, if you know the range on ah. uh, that muck, you can try and bait the attacks out so that hopefully Kaden doesn't go for Protect. May have been a choice. Uh, Some people talk about elixiring after Caden, but using the candy late after the Mug and Beetle uh, will mean that Stami might hit 53 a Pokemon late. Should still be in time for the Dragonite, let's hope, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that just uh, moves the level up a little down the line. So I'm not sure if waiting with the candy was also part of that strat. Yeah. Okay, getting uh, Toxic Turn 1, one of the potential openings you can get. Usually you really want to see Protect Turn 1 out of the Weezing. Yeah. Gets the Protect Turn 2 while healing it off, off the poison. So at the very least, you know, there wasn't an extra turn outside of the healing. Oh, he. I. Uh, uh, T-Pat may have candied late because he hadn't hit level 48 on Sabrina, and he just needed to hit that from from Caden and then use the candy. That makes okay. sense then. Uh, still might be in trouble in terms of hitting level 53 for for Dragonite though. Mm -hmm. But yeah, th these. Ergote and T-Pat are literally neck and neck. They are. Yes. On the same like, Pokemon, selecting the move at the same time. This is ridiculous. They're in sync. Holy oh my god! Heck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Ah, uh, get your VR goggles ready for the double vision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't kidding when I when I said this is the closest race we've had so far. Uh, this is gonna stay intense throughout the rest of the run. Yeah, so what's the rules on just like ties and tiebreakers and stuff? Because, you know, we might need to go <laughs> to that here. <laughs> that is a good question. I think they would just be timed very precisely. And if, if they are uh, tied to the millisecond, which I don't believe they would be, but um, I don't know. I don't think that's even a rule for a tiebreaker in that situation. Well, I'm a cursed well, digital well, well, race. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sandy, I'm into it. I'll have to go get dinner, so maybe like <laughs> an hour or two after the race, I can come back and come. <laughs> right. Well, we're flying to Viridian now. It is time to approach Giovanni's gym. Finally. Yep. Uh, can't quite go into it yet. There's still one more cutscene to clear. Or I guess yeah. two. Uh, or three, actually. Well, it is three cutscenes. Uh, <laughs> Ergote entering a little low here. Might get the walk down. Uh, no. Yes, is getting the walk down. So losing like two seconds here to that extra animation. If you enter a little closer to the sign into this cutscene then the rival will not walk down will just turn to you and keep speaking mm -hmm. so it is a little faster to keep close to that sign yeah so now we're gonna get three mega stones for pokemon we haven't even seen this game that is true we haven't seen either of the counter starters so uh yeah this is just a reminder that mega evolutions are in this game bring megas back I want my Mega Tigaton. <laughs> oh, that, that would be pretty cool. Right. Um, but yeah, at this point, we're starting to get into the really interesting part of the game where it's called uh, Hit Hydro Pump and Don't Get Crit. Uh, <laughs> obviously, on some of the fights where you're worried about getting crit, there are uh, backup strategies that you can use. Uh, specifically, the three fights that we're most worried about getting uh, sudden critical hits are Giovanni, Lance, and then the champion. Um, and there's two controller strategies that have been developed to uh, minimize the risk on those fights. However, uh, we're starting to g still trying to go fast. Uh, Ergo Tate and T-Pat are in a foot race. Um, saving a turn by hitting a Hydro Pump is going to be... Uh, game determining potentially. So you yeah. will probably see both of these runners going for some of those riskier strategies, either going for like a 1C fight on one of the ones I mentioned, or going for some risky hydro pump strats. Yeah, the first the first instance of being able to potentially save time by hitting a hydro pump is in this gym. Uh, the next trainer that both of our runners are gonna fight here, uh, ace trainer Samuel has a Nidder King, and uh, this Nidder King dies to a Hydro Pump, but it also has the move Mega Horn, which is a very strong bug type move, so it's super effective on Starmie. Um, if you hit, miss Hydro Pump, that Mega Horn can just kill Starmie. So, yeah, yeah we'll be seeing both runners go for the 2C strat here and not try to hit a Hydro Pump. Uh, playing it safe. And I can definitely uh, respect that choice. Oh yeah, no, like, um, th there is that balance between like, okay, you know, it's 80% to save, you know, the time of a turn, which is like, what, five, ten seconds maybe? Mm. But if you miss, you lose the race. I think yeah. both runners are very much aware of that fact. So it's like, 
at what point, not knowing where your opponent is, because, you know, the, the runners aren't necessarily watching right now, and even if they are, it's all a slight delay. So at what point do you, are you like, okay, I need to go for this hydro, hydro Pump right here in order to win it, by saving that turn? Or uh, are you just like, no, I'm just going to play it out even if I... I lose, I feel confident that my time will be good enough to keep me in a good spot um, either in the top of the lower bracket or being one of the, of the people to advance on time. Yeah. So, Owen in this race guarantees that you qualify for the upper bracket in round three. Uh, if you place second here, you have to hope that none of the other second place finishers uh, get a faster time. Three of the six second place finishers uh, get to stay in the upper bracket. Um, and it is pretty pretty competitive uh, getting those three wildcard spots. So getting the win is definitely the, the scenario that you're hoping for. Yeah, it looks like both runners are going for the 2C safety stretch for Giovanni here, uh, where you go into it with a Rapidash, and then Rapidash should be taken up by Earthquake from the Duck Trio. Uh, so you don't need to keep uh, selecting a move on Rapidash every turn, but you get that added safety of having Earthquake's damage reduced and getting two inputs turn one to set up and immediately take out the Dark Trio. So you don't have to gamble with X defense and hoping that you don't get crit. Yeah. Um, and even if you live the Giovanni crit, there's no chance... That, there's always the chance that you'll get crit the second time. Uh, both of our star means level up here. Uh, we can see about a 130 on t side, a 136 on Ergote's side. Ergote does have this Nitto Queen to take out as T Pat is finished with the fight. T Pat just that little hair ahead of Ergote, but again, there's still plenty of room for RNG to change things up a bit. Oh, definitely. Did anyone catch the level 50 speeds? I was not looking at speeds. I can uh, pull, pull up the screen though real quick see that speed was pretty good if i recall correctly so you may be able to skip the x speed which that's a couple of seconds of menuing to the back mid fight um that could you know expand the small lead that he has right now Okay, so that is a one, uh, a 138 on t -Pat side mm -hmm. and a 142 on Ergote's side. For okay, speed. so, so t -Pat won't be able to go for the axe speed skip, but Ergote will, uh, mm -hmm. meaning that he has the potential to catch up a little bit here. Oh yeah, I, uh, I just read in chat, Arte did not buy X special defense, so he's locked into the safety stress in the Elite Four. Uh, meaning that if t wants to risk it to secure the win, go for the for the 1C strats uh, on Lance and or Champ, then he could potentially gain quite the advantage from that. Unfortunately, Arte missing a little bit of of time by having to call the support trader in battle. Uh, the extra animation you get from the support trader showed up and threw out a Pokemon. Does take a little bit of extra time over summoning them outside before the fight, uh, but it's still, you know, just a small bit of time. but on the last Pokemon here for Rival 5. 
uh, Ergotier also facing the right right now, but I came out one Pokemon early, so uh, still has two Pokemon to take out. Just a hair behind right now. Mm -hmm. But that, that difference between the two could be gone by the very next race. Uh, by the very next fight, excuse me. Uh, because the first fight in Victory Road is kind of infamous as well. <laughs> Yeah, but we do have a little bit to go as our runners go through the badge checks. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, one of the moments of this of the original game that I remember from playing this as a kid. Oh yeah, definitely. I remember uh, when I first played this, I would go there after every badge. Like, yeah. just check how far I could go now. <laughs> <laughs> Which for the first couple of badges, I mean, you, you can't really do it uh, until you reach Vermillion, so you can't do it after Misty. Mm -hmm. But I definitely did it after, because I was so hyped for just getting that little bit extra progress on right. the badge checks. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, T-Pat now, done with the badge checks, entering Victory Road. Which also means we're gonna see some block pushing, finally. Uh, oh boy. my favorite mechanic! Uh-huh, because for some reason, even though the strength in any other Pokemon game up to that point has always... Well, that's not true. Strength me mechanic was changed in, I believe, Gen 5. But one through four, it was always the same. You press A on the boulder once, it goes through that so-and-so uses strength, and then you can just walk into the boulder and push it. But in this game, for some reason, you have to press A every time you want to move the boulder. Yep. Um, also of note, uh, our rudders were about 26 seconds apart on the entry to Victory Road. And that is important to know for sure. Uh, not quite sure what happened on T-Bet's fight, T fight there. I was looking at Agate's screen. Uh, might have missed a Hydro Pump? Yeah, potentially. Agate did miss. Yeah, he did miss uh, someone yeah. in, in chat just said so. Uh, yeah, Argotay just saved a turn. Just mm -hmm. caught up the tiniest bit uh, from hitting that hydro pump. Ah, uh, Tifa has to wait, wait for the spinner. Ah, uh, and then the repel. Yeah, well, yeah. That usually happens around that point. But uh, yeah, the, the that spinner. You can. The only way you can block your way is if he looks left, and Arcade didn't get that, so uh, yeah, that's just another second or two that T Pat had to wait where Arcade didn't have to do that. Yeah, uh, lo looks like from the combination of both, uh, Arcade made up about 10 seconds. So now they're about uh, 10 15 seconds apart. That's so unbelievably close for Victory Road. Right. Like, I'm used to seeing runners, you know, minutes apart coming through here, you know, when they're both on the same caliber just because of how much variance this game has with the catch routes and the Joy-Cons being Joy-Cons and all the fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, to see two runners this close at this point is incredible. But losing just a tiny amount of additional time here by getting the paralysis from Thunderbolt on Hypno. And at this point, every tiny bit helps Ergotay to catch up. Yeah, having to wait for the uh, karate spinner, uh, though, you know, that's to be expected, and Ergotay has to wait for that as well. I uh, will yeah. see how the block pushing puzzle goes for both of them. <laughs> I mean, I, 
I would believe that at this point, nurse can play quite a huge role uh, in the gameplay of the runners. So uh, you really don't want to accidentally push this block into a corner where you can't get it out of. Uh, yeah. Because this puzzle takes forever to redo. So want to make sure you get it onto that uh, pressure plate. Yeah, this is by hard the by far the the hardest uh, block puzzle. Uh, T Pat is through. And Air speaking of nurse, has to wiggle a little bit, but makes it through. Uh, you want to talk about Alexa Skip real quick? Uh yes. Now I want to talk. I just want to see T Pat pull it up. Alexa Skip, the final trainer skip of the run. Uh, you can squeeze through right next to uh, this trainer to avoid her vision. And Ergotay also gets it perfect, so uh, we're still neck and neck here. Uh, the fight itself is pretty slow. Uh, Alexa has three Pokemon, I believe, so you really want to be able to skip her. Uh, both runners pulled it off flawlessly, so yeah, no nerves. And, and also the extra uh, time you have to spend healing up uh, not your HP, but your PP, uh, in oh, no. uh, Indigo Plateau itself. Oh, that's two sleeps. And just um, like that, Ergo tapled ahead. Oh no! Oh, T no. Pat! T Pat! Summoning second controller right now. This is nightmare. This is a nightmare, Caroline fights. Uh, missing three pumps in a row? Or was that two pumps right now? Yeah, I think two pumps in a row. So now finally hits okay. it. That's so unfortunate. Ugh. Yeah, now uh, now once the Elite Four stress are looking increasingly likely because he may have to do that to catch up. Yeah, T Pat is not out of this race by any means, but this just really got exciting. Especially because uh, Ergote is the second pot for this race. Oh, yeah. Uh, but they are very, very close in skill. Like I said, uh, Ergote's PB is around 30 seconds slower than uh, than T Pat's. Ergote did and just get a, a pretty rough round one race, which um, forced him into part two here for round two. So both yeah. runners incredibly close in terms of skill level. And we're seeing that in action right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ergote could have easily also been one of the pot one runners, and we're seeing that in action right now, uh, pushing the block, uh, the final block for both runners. Um, and then we're going to go to fight Dawson, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, we do have to fight every victory road trainer in this category. No man skips allowed. Yeah, which, you know, is the only reason I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If this were an I mean sand tournament, I also would not be participating. Yeah. Those mount skips are terrifying. Yeah, and I also didn't, just don't have the hardware for it. Yeah. Anyway, uh Dawson, the Lickitung has power whip, connects with the the Starmie. Um Looks like we're in a good HP range that you don't need to heal until after the fight, though I imagine Ergote will heal before Lorelei at this point. Yeah, at that HP you really should heal before Lorelei. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you can't you can't take two waterfalls from that HP and you don't want to spend a turn healing. Yeah. Uh if I was about to say if uh power whip missed. Uh, there's a chance that t -Pat might be able to skip healing, uh, but with that HP, depending on what happens, I I don't know the uh, waterfall calculations, so t -Pat might actually be fine. Uh, depends. If he goes for plus four instead of plus six, then uh, I think this HP would be fine not heal for Lorelei, but setting up to plus six, tanking three waterfalls, I don't think he has uh, the HP or defense four. So... Yeah. Oh, I was skipping... Okay. Uh, someone in chat just pointed out that Ergo did not pick up the full restore, so is also going for 2C Agatha, which gives T-Pad additional time to catch up, potentially, if everything goes as planned. Mm-hmm. Um... 
Though I don't know offhand the ranges for a uh, T-pad if he goes for plus four Lorelei. Yeah, I also don't know. I'm not quite sure what his special uh, his special attack is at the moment. Uh, yeah, you can once see Agatha, even if you don't buy X special defense, because uh, if you get into that very rare spot where you get uh, the turn one crunch, you can just summon the second controller after and like then heal out of that situation while attacking with Starmy. So there is a backup for it, uh, even if you don't buy a special defense uh, in Saffron. Oh, T-Pad straight up depositing the Rapid Ash. Okay. He's oh. going to 1C. Oh, let's go! Um, Ergote going in at, at 2.52.27. Uh, let's see what time T-Pad starts the Lorelei fight at. It's going to be a 2.52.56, so 29 seconds between these two razors. Okay, team, um went ahead and attacked at plus four. So I think he has slightly better special attack, I'm not sure. Uh, if Thunderbolt on, on this lapis was a range, then um, he hit that. So does he need to go for Hydro Pump here? Or does yeah, he for Scald? Goes for Scald. Okay. Yeah, T-Pad yeah. going for plus six. Okay. Which just guarantees that you can go for mm. Scald on the Jinx. It will always, always Oko. Okay. You don't have to hide with Pump again. And since T-Pad's hide with Pump accuracy this run has been uh, not great, uh, I can definitely yeah. understand wanting to set up to plus six here. Also, the Lapras can be an additional range if you have low special attack and only set up to plus four. Yeah, and I don't know what that range is, and I I think with the overall eh, stars that both of our runners have setting up all the way makes sense. Uh, Ergote entering Bruno's room at 5407. I keep it probably losing a little bit of time here now because you had to spend that extra turn setting up to plus six. That is to be expected where um, we're probably going to see T-Pad catch up on Agatha, starting on Agatha, if Ar mm -hmm. Agatha is going to go for 2C all the way. Yeah, uh, our runners still that 28, 29 seconds apart, actually. Um, oh, interesting. And luckily, uh, Bruno, very straightforward. Still, you know, the joke of the Kanto Elite Four. Yeah, Bruno the joke until he isn't. So, uh... It's luckily... all funny games until someone presses faint. Uh-huh. Uh, luckily, uh... Ergotay got the Stealth Hawk opening because he had a Pokemon in the back, uh, in the back of the party. But uh, Tifa doesn't have that, so he got Earthquaked, but uh, it's in pretty comfortable HP here. So, uh, yeah. Especially because I think his defense is pretty good. Yeah, not in faint range. So, should also just finish off this fight by spamming Psychic. No danger whatsoever. Yep. And right now, health really doesn't matter because both of our runners are going to heal to full before Agatha anyway. Um, though we are going to start paying attention to the level uh, 52 stats for T-Pat. Um, I missed Ergotes. And there's the level up. 252. 134 special attack. That's, uh, that would not be a good range for for the uh, Dragonet at all. Yeah. Uh, Ergote talks to Agatha at 56.15 as T-Pat finishes up with Bruno. Uh, we'll see uh, how far apart they are at that point. Yeah, and we're seeing uh, Ergote going for the 2C strat here with Dodio specifically. Uh, 
I'm not 100% sure why it has to be Jojo, I believe, to bait a specific attack. Um, our brothers are actually closing. Uh, the gap is only 20 seconds now. T-Pad is catching up. Yeah, T-Pad is going for the 1C, so it has potential to catch up here. Yeah. Or still do for champ, okay. Pretty standard 1C fight for T-Pad so far. Ideally, would love to see Power of Love here. Doesn't get it, has to use the full star. Yeah, perfect for course. <laughs> All right. Uh, no the rest of uh, defense drop, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, the rest of the fight is now very straightforward. If you survive the setup, you just don't want to see the defense drop from the first crunch that Arbok uses, because that can get you in real danger or force you to heal on the Golbat to avoid the quick attack, which happens occasionally. Uh, the defense drop, I don't, know, I don't know how likely it is, but sometimes it just happens. Uh, ergo Te, uh, getting the moment to use uh, the Max Elixir now mm -hmm. in the fight, uh, yeah. because you have to use your second controller for something, uh, finishing up the fight at 58.13 as T-Pat has to finish off the last two Pokemon. Yes. Um, gosh. My heart Agate is going. Yeah, Agate gets to skip the menu here because of the juicy Agatha strat. Got to heal and to also use the Max Elixir. We'll be one Psychic short now, but with uh, the with the 2C strats, you, 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 you usually excuse me, end up using some super effective moves for safety anyway. Uh, so probably just gonna like scald the Aerodactyl or Thunderbolt the Gyarados to make up for that one lost Psychic PP. Yeah, oh, T-Pad now actually also adding Dodrio back into the party. Interesting. Okay. You know, again, like, uh, you're either playing... Uh, if you're not playing for first at this point, which, you know, okay, uh, is risky, uh, you're playing for a really good uh, time to try and uh, stay in the top bracket on. Yeah, and apparently that is what T-Pat is going for now. Uh... Yeah, T-Pat in chat going, GG can't win. Uh, so yeah, he is just trying to finish strong and make sure that he doesn't have to redo the Elite Four. Yeah. I do believe that T-Pack could have caught up here. The time loss from the 2C strat on lands is actually pretty significant. So, yeah, it, I mean, it looks like t is just going for the 1C strat anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, just going for a late summon, apparently. Not waiting out all of the turns. I uh, doesn't know if he hits 53 in turn, that is the concern. Absolutely understandable. This is still slightly slower than what Ergata did because he uh, just summoned. Let's say slower, slightly faster because he summoned the second controller a tad later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how our runners are doing going into the champion fight. Um, but I will not be surprised if this is the closest race we have seen uh, in the second round, when it's all said and done. I mean, there are a couple of other very close races, potentially. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like... Oh, what a good race. Both of our runners, you know, dropping incredibly uh, respectable times just in general. Um, it's 53. I do believe, and that is so sad to say, but uh, this all came down to that Caroline fight. Because Tipat yeah. was in the lead up until that point, and having it all be decided by hydro pump accuracy is just 
That's just rough. It, unfortunately, it's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes, um, especially when you're trying to play a game with as high variance as this, you know. Some days you sit down to play poker and you just cannot get a hand together that that's going to get you somewhere. Some days you sit down to play Pokemon and your Hydro Pumps just go wide 100% of the time. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> I could take getting Power of Love, so Dojo actually holds on one turn longer. Probably he's going to get a quick attack now though. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not too much of time loss. This not the attack. Uh, the Raichu could still do it. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, extra level up to waste a little yeah. bit of time here. Yeah. Hercules is falling a little bit in the chat, but quick attack does happen here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there we yep, go. And there it goes. And that should be GG for Ergotay. Yeah, as long as long as there's no like accidental miss menu. Um yeah. Uh this run is basically done. And it looks like uh it was, I'm getting a very, very pixelated screen, it's hard to tell how many Pokemon there still are. Looks like a high three or four. Yeah, the, okay. Potentially low three or five. Two more Pokemon left. Um, I think the Marowak and one last. other. Nope, nope Slowbro, there's so. a Slowbro. All right, so that's the final Pokemon for Ergote. And I was just mashing for a minute and five seconds, roughly. <laughs> so very, very high three or four. Excellent time, excellent race. Close to the very end. What an incredible show from all three of our runners tonight. GG's all around, as T-Pat also brings it home. Just one mass Thunderbolt here to also take out the slow bro. And we're just waiting for the time here. Uh, there we go, GG. Our end it looked just barely uh, sub 305, but uh, race time. I was say, saying race time is a uh, 30503. Yeah, yeah. Might may have um, split late though. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes that's a problem with race time updating. Uh, I guess we'll see after. Yeah. Uh, but like both the time on screen and the race time time are estimates. Um, you know, what matters is the frame count in the end. Absolutely, and T-Pad now finishing just about 40 seconds behind here. GG, GG. Such a close race. Truly incredible race here. Mm -hmm. Came down to just a bit of, just a bit of bad luck on T-Pad's end. Uh, looks like we are joined by Ergo Tay. We'll see if uh, T Pet has, wants to join. Uh, Kid Rocker is also floating around in this voice call. Yo. What's up, y'all? <sighs> How y'all doing? That was something. Pretty stressful in the end. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Uh, so, tell me about your run. What? Uh, uh, yeah, what do you think about only it? thing that. Yeah, only thing that even remotely like went wrong in the early and mid game was that having to like load the moon room like three times to get Clefairy or Paris. 
ended up getting both, but like, yeah, that was, I decided to go for two controller strats because I figured this time would probably be on the brink and I was ahead of t patting catches. So I kind of gambled that he wouldn't get perfect luck to catch up. <laughs> Did a yeah. bit of mismenuing in the end there that could have definitely caused the thing, but did not, so... All in all, just decline. Yeah, I mean... You were just saying that you were kind of hoping for a little bit of bad luck on on T-Pad's end, and in the end, mm -hmm. what I think really decided the run is that Caroline fight for T-Pad. Uh, yeah, how many times he did he miss Hydro Pump? We can just ask him directly if he's uh, ready to join the call, but uh, I think it was, it was twice, just straight up, uh, and then he had to summon the second controller, so... Yeah. Not to mention, I think there were two sleeps that happened in the middle of that, too. Yeah, I got yeah, that's right. much perfect victory road. Bit of, bit of the opposite on my end. Yeah, I was, like, seeing what the chat was writing and figured that there was definitely some shenanigans happening. I, I needed one of three fights to not go disastrously bad. Uh, yep. Either A, the Caroline fight, which I missed three Hydro Pumps three, and got put uh. to sleep twice. Uh, the Archer fight, where I got turn one Thunderbolt paralyzed. Uh, or the Ted fight, where I got turn one Thunderbolt paralyzed. Any one of those fights, I'm okay, and I'm... See, I was just I bad I'm, at it. I'm, I'm beside myself, because at Blaine, the run was a 301 pace. And I lost four minutes in that game. I was just bad and hit the spinner that guards the heal bed in mansion. Got a bit greedy there. <laughs> but like well, seriously, like, it. G GG Ergo. Like I want, I want to say that up front. Like GG. Like well done. Yeah. You played awesome. You did everything you needed to do to win. I'm just personally upset with myself over yeah. the horrid RNG. I also got pretty much perfect spawns. So like. Got a little bit of help from the game, definitely. <laughs> but I mean, sometimes you just need a little bit of luck. Um, and then Kid Rocker, I know that you decided to tap out early. Uh, the game was just being kind of rude to you. But how are how are you feeling about uh, your run up until that point? It was very bad. This is probably the worst run I've had in the past couple of weeks. Between me just not doing what I'm supposed to, having mistakes, and then RNG also just shafting me. Mm -hmm. Um, First mistake that I did... Well, first thing that happened to me was I somehow missed Excellent on uh, Geodude and Moon. With the good cycle. I was surprised by that. Um, got 15 before Misty, but then forgot to X special on the Psyduck on Misty, and then ended up dying to Misty. Um, after that, my mindset was okay, but I was like, okay, this run is very bad. Then somehow. I don't know how, but I ran out of Great Balls in Rock Tunnel and had only like six Pokeballs to catch a Zubat, and I couldn't do that. Broke out three times. So then my mental just went out the window from there, and then just deaths kept happening because my mental was gone. Yeah, no. Mental, especially in, you know, a three-hour run like this, where things are going up and down and left and right all over, is such a delicate balance, and I don't think anyone here faults you uh, for just being like, nah, enough's enough. I, I am done with this game. Game clearly hates me today. Like, I was just comparing to my, uh, 
both my 313 from round one and my uh, 310 PB. And right before I forfeited, I was about eight minutes behind my 310. And then uh, I was like five minutes behind my 313. I'm like, this isn't going to be a time that even gets me into pot one for the uh lower bracket so i'm like i'm no competition in this race i'm in no competition for time so i and my mental was gone i'm like i might as well just forfeit this mm -hmm. and then on top of it getting the pretty much minimum special attack star me too yeah though yours that is, I will be curious to see the stat checker on your Starmie, because that was definitely not a good Starmie. Sheep saying it's four or five IVs. Oof. Yeah, that's really rough. Very good special attack and speed for Argote. Yeah, yeah that uh, looks very different. Mm-hmm. But the good news is, you know, as uh, this was an upper bracket race, you know, you will have a chance for redemption come next week. Yeah, that's why I figured I'm like, at this point, I'm still in the tournament, but there's not really a point to continue the run, mm -hmm. especially with my mental just going downhill. Yeah, and sometimes it is just important to focus on that mental health over the success of the run. So, uh, does anyone of the runners want to say something, one last thing uh, about the run? I, I guess I'll just recap on my end. Yeah, like sure. obviously, like the my end game was pretty uh, forgettable. It's like throw off the tape. Like we eh, need to look at that again. Um, <laughs> but I was I was very very happy with how I played in the early game. I thought all of my decision making was really on point. You know, clean catch route um, up to that point. And um, I actually just looked at uh, my split comparison. I was uh, I was only like thirty seconds behind my PB uh, through C skim. So obviously, like, there's a lot of positives that I can take away with my gameplay. Um, like, I definitely controlled everything I could control. And, like, up to that point, the worst thing that happened was uh, I ended up missing the uh, <laughs> the plus two Arbok range, uh, the drill run range on J&J &J 2. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, and it's only, it, that only happens if you're minus uh, attack on Rhyhorn. So I was like, oh, if that's, like, the only unlucky thing <laughs> that will happen, then uh, I thought I was in pretty good shape. but. But yeah, definitely the first two hours has a lot of positives for me. Um, I'm certainly going to keep my fingers crossed if this can make continue into the upper bracket. Uh, even I'm not sure uh, if a 305 high, because there are so many other good runners. Um, and not just the pot one runners, as we've seen, like the pot two runners are all insanely strong. So so I'll have to be watching, biting my nails pretty closely uh, into the uh, the second week here. Yes, and that second week uh, is pretty packed with some very exciting matchups. Uh, that can definitely be challenge for that time. Just looking at the upcoming races here. Right now, as we speak, there is still that other race going on between New Amber, King Traps, and Iron over at PSR TV2. Uh, and then on, well, tomorrow, right? We have Edgy versus Aspect. Uh, versus Joker sleeps. Actually, obviously, coming off of that world record in round one, very much a favorite. But Aspect took round one a little more casually. So definitely also a, a runner to look out for when it comes to that uh, to that wild card for for this round. And then of course the third race. Uh, a lower bracket race here on 
the upcoming races, Crisis versus Fortunate versus Pokéguy, also going to be a very interesting race to watch, I'm sure. Yeah, every single one of the races coming up in this round is going to be incredible. And, you know, I would not be surprised if this was one of the closest races we see. I would not, I would also very much not be surprised if we get even closer races as the this two week uh, time frame for this second round goes on. Oh yeah, later in the in the week there are some very spicy races. So uh, definitely, mm -hmm. definitely come back for those. <laughs> for now, though, I think we will wrap this up and uh, send you over to PSR TV2 to watch the other race. That's still going on. Uh, Amber yeah, uh, and Sabrina still right now. And then our other two runners finishing up Sylph. So this is also a just very close three-way race. Yes, absolutely. So not sure if anyone can start a rate to that channel. <laughs> I definitely can't. Uh, let's see if I can. Never mind. Too late. All right. Somebody uh, already set it up. So, yeah. Uh, one more GG to the runners. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a very, very close race up until the end. Yep, and I look forward to seeing what you all do next week. Absolutely, and to everyone watching, thank you. Uh, we'll see you on this channel tomorrow. Not me personally, but others. <laughs> I mean, I'll probably be hanging out of chat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm going to be asleep because it's 3 a.m. that she raised. Hell, hell yeah. Hey, it's 3 a.m. now. <laughs> Or God day, go get some salute GG's, y'all. GG.